Tired, what happened? Um, I work night shifts, and normally I'm sleeping right now because I'm going to work at about um, here. Yeah. Tonight I'm supposed to be at home at 11 o'clock. I'm normally not sleeping right now because I usually get myself about an hour and a half or so to get to work. Where are you staying? I live in Port Orange, but I work. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> that, that's a trip. Downtown. Uh, never mind. Honestly, the new post that they put me at is much better. I used to do, uh, do security over at Northbridge, over on Millennium Boulevard. Mm -hmm. And I'm very glad that the one over at um, Uptown Place opened up. The guy there gave us two weeks, and uh, my boss is like, well, I want you over there. Well, it must be because you do a good job. That's what he tells me, and that's what, uh, you know, that's what I try to do. I mean, I've gotten, I guess I've gotten an uh, email sent to the property manager from the residence telling me what a great job I'm doing. I've actually been given one of our small little blurbs that one of them sent me. Nice. Uh, the property manager loves me to death, I guess. My bosses have all been really happy. They actually authorized an additional raise to keep me because I was actually um, going to terminate my employment with this company at the beginning of this month because I just couldn't afford to keep driving out there. And they wanted to keep me so much that they actually gave me another raise to help, you know, offset the gas costs and everything. Cool. Yeah. All right. Um, first and foremost, let's get through all the preliminary stuff, and then I'll okay. tell you a little bit about myself and, and what we're doing. And uh, yeah, because I mean, I, 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 you know, I've heard of polygraphs. You know, you see it all on TV and stuff like that, but uh, I'm not really sure exactly how this all works. I'll explain it. It's awesome. What I need you to do is print your name here, read all this out loud to me. This is your consent to take a polygraph here today. Okay. You, from what I understand, you're here on an appointment. I guess you made an appointment with the detectives to come down for yeah. this polygraph. Well, they, they made the appointment for me. They asked me if I'd be willing to come in yesterday, and I said, yeah, sure. Okay. So I'm just saying you're not under arrest or anything, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, no, no. You're, you're just a witness that yep, they're just trying to vindicate everybody and follow, the, you know. Yep. Okay. Because I don't know too much about it. I want to ask you a little mm -hmm. bit, um, see what you know about it, and it should be pretty quick. You know, I know a little bit more, but only from what the news is putting out there, because I've been trying to keep track and find out what's going on. Well, we all know the best idea. Well, we all know we can't trust the news anyway. Yeah, they've already tried, they already tried flagging me down once at work, and I'm like, hey, I'm going to keep walking this way and go inside. Yeah. Because I am not talking to you vultures. Uh, so go ahead and put your name here, read this out loud to me. I just make sure that you know how to read. <laughs> Reading? What is that? Uh, do you want the, like my full middle name too, or just the middle initial? Um, middle initial is fine. Okay. I'm Stephen Michael Blacksbury. Acknowledge that I'm fully aware of my constitutional rights. The reverse, and I do hereby request voluntarily, without duress, coercion, threat, promise of reward, or immunity, that a polygraph examination, truth verification, slash lie detector test be administrated to me. I further consent to any electronic recording of the entire polygraph procedure, including but not limited to videotaping. After having the examination process explained to me and having been advised of the requirements and processes involved in the polygraph test, I do hereby request the necessary attachments to be placed on my person, and I do hereby consent to everything that is necessary to be done and to be spoken in order to effectuate, effectuate, to make effectuate that. this request. New word. I understand that conditions such as hypertension, pregnancy, respiratory, or heart ailments, and any medication that I am taking may affect the results of the polygraph examination. I understand that the examination itself may be stressful and that I may consult with a physician prior to this polygraph examination to determine if it is suitable for me to be tested. To the best of my knowledge, I have no physical or mental condition that will adversely affect my taking the examination today or cause adverse results during the interview slash examination. I do hear by release and forever hold harmless the examiner, the agents, and or employees of the Orlando Police Department and the City of Orlando. I further agree that the results of this examination may be made available to the proper authorities and released by the examiner as deemed necessary. Okay, so if you can sign that, you can just sign here, date it there. Okay. Uh, should have made that appointment with the doctor. <laughs> Why? What's, what's going well, on? Well, I've been under a lot of stress lately because I'm moving. I've got a wedding coming up. This whole situation happening. I mean, the plan hell well, we'll, there. We'll, we'll get this behind you. I mean, it, it's just you know, it's right here. Yep. Yeah, it's just. I'm gonna deal with. Any debts 
other than, you know, my stepsister dying a couple years back um, other than when I was in Afghanistan. And that was not a fun time for me. Uh, it's the 22nd? It is. So it's just like... Um, now, did you give sworn statements and all that stuff? Uh, when I went on the night that all the police officers were there, I did uh, fill out statements. Okay, when you talk to the detectives here, they read you your rights or anything like that? They have not. Okay, well, and this is the same form we use for even employment. Mm -hmm. uh, we make sure that everyone's fully aware of what their rights are before we even get started. It's just a uh, procedure that we use here, and that's why it's on the back of the consent form. So what you can do is read each one out loud, and if you understand, I'll put your initials there and answer these last two questions. If you have a question about any of them, mm -hmm. stop me and ask me. I will explain it to you until you understand. All right. It's, it's just important for me to know that you know what your rights are. It doesn't mean you're under arrest or anything. It just means you know, we're going to be talking about it for a criminal case. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, you've got to read them out loud. No, I'm sorry, sure you Okay, so you have the right to remain silent. Initial, anything I say may be used against me in court. Initial, I have the right to talk to a lawyer before and during the questioning. Initial, if I cannot afford a lawyer and want one, one will be provided for me before questioning without charge. Initial, has anyone threatened me or promised me anything to get me to talk to you? No, they have not. Do I understand these rights, and do I wish to continue the interview at this time? Yes. And level of education. Um, and I'm in college now, so it's some college. Yeah, you just put some college, that's fine. So what I need to do now is steal a little information from you. You have your driver's license, I just Just make sure you are who you say you are. I should hope so. Sometimes I don't feel like myself, but that's just how I think. Yeah. All right. You're in the Marines? I was. I was Air Force. All right. Yeah. All right, come on. Make fun of me now. Come on. I'm waiting. <laughs> hey. Nah, I'm just kidding. To me, I look at the whole rivalry between the service branches as just brotherly love. It is. It's just, we're just jealous because you get all the nice dinners and nice places to stay. Yeah, actually, to be honest, I was actually a little disgusted when I found out that if, like, I had been stationed at any other base than an Air Force base, I would have been getting paid extra for living in substandard conditions. To me, I found that to be inappropriate if, if me living in the same conditions that an army or a marine or you know a soldier or a marine would be living in is considered substandard. That's an insult to you guys. We're used to it. I know, <laughs> we but, start from day one like that. Yeah, no. So <laughs> like, really? You're just kind of pompous like that. All right. Um, your nickname is what? What do they call you? Uh, <laughs> I've got a couple, but uh, Steve or Ducks. D U X. Any scars marks or tattoos? <laughs> yes. Uh, no tattoos, multiple scars. Okay. Yeah. Most recent ones were from getting stabbed multiple times. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and my wife's ex-boyfriend the morning after I closed were Interesting. Yeah, this is the worst of them. Defensive wound. Yeah, he tried to stab me in the throat, and that's when I decided I'm going to grab And Well, you got to. Yourself. Exactly. All right, your date of birth is? April 25th, 1982. And your place of birth? Is Nashua, New Hampshire. Okay. Yeah, I'm a Yankee. That's what you said there, though. Why? Well, I'm actually, well, Pittsburgh, New Hampshire is actually where I've been living for a while now. And, oh my god, I miss it up there. So you just moved back down from there? Well, I got out of the Air Force, um, not this past September, but the September of 2014. Mm -hmm. And my wife and I were supposed to be getting a house from our mother -in -law, from my mother-in-law. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, that fell through, so we got an apartment down here. Oh, excuse me. But uh, we're actually getting the house uh, the 1st of November. So, oh, cool. Yeah, and I just figured, you know, it would be less expensive than trying to move up to New Hampshire where job opportunities are kind of nil and bullied. Whereas down here, 
least from what the research I had done before getting out, um, there was a better job opportunity for me, or job opportunities as a former military. And sadly, that didn't prove to be the case. It took me six months to get a friggin' job. Wow. Yeah, it sucked. I actually got my job with a security company with through one of my professors. Okay. And I was a criminal justice major. All right. So what are you majoring in now? Uh, programming and analysis. But, oh. I, but, I'm, but it, um, it's kind of a long-termish plan because I'm focusing that, but I'm going to use my electives to get a whole bunch of cybersecurity and cyber forensics um, degrees and stuff so I can just roll it all into a cyber forensics. Cool. Yeah. Computers are my thing. <laughs> Well, that's the that's what's going on these days. Not so. coming about. Uh, your height is uh, about six foot. Okay. And your weight? Uh, ooh, I haven't weighed myself recently. I'm gonna say between two twenty to thirty. Okay, so I'm gonna do two twenty five. I'm with that. That sounds good. Your hair's brown. Nope. What color is your hair? Red. It's actually red. 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 Okay. Yeah. Well, it's actually a combination of red. Brown and blonde. It all depends on how much sun I get. Okay. <laughs> and your eyes are brown. Brown. Okay. Uh, your home address it is sixteen forty five Dunlawton Avenue, apartments one one two three, Port Orange, Florida. Was the apartment number? Sorry. One one two three. Sorry. And Port Orange. Wow. wow. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, a little bit of a drive down here, but where I'm from originally, that's the normal drive to get to the grocery store. Yeah. Yeah, so. <laughs> and the zip code is? It's 32127. Although, like I said, that address is actually going to change in November, but if this is still going on by then, I will obviously be contacting the detectives and giving them the new update. Yeah, this is just for my background. Yep. One. They, you, you contact them. Mm -hmm. that, that's what they do. Okay. I, I, I just, this is all I do. Okay. So. You're the polygraph guy. I'm the mm -hmm. polygraph guy. Okay. And your phone number is? 228-365-2971. That's my cell phone. Okay. And you work for? Uh, Vital Security and Investigations. I think I have one of their cards in my wallet. Let me check. Nope, just my social. You should stop carrying that with me. Yes, you should. Shouldn't have that on me. Actually, I think the reason why I was carrying it on me was because uh, I needed it for something. I just forgot to take it back out of my wallet. And so, there I am. Uh, oh, that's my uh, employee ID. Okay. And uh, I believe uh, the name of the president, the uh, company president's on there, Todd Rogers. Right. Cool. And you have a work number? Um, not well. I've got a I've got a site call them, like a dispatch or something. They no, want to. I, I no. I just I just work one site, and I'm the only officer right now that works that site. So oh, okay. I just carry a site phone on me when I'm when I'm on duty, and if the ready the residents have a problem or the police need to get a hold of me, they just call out and I answer. Okay. So not really, unfortunately. And you said you're engaged. No, nope, I am. I know I am married. Okay, you're married. Was engaged about three years ago. <laughs> okay. Well, I am longer than that. So you. How long have you been married? I've been married for almost three years now. I was uh, married in 2013. Okay. And your spouse's name? Uh, Grigena, G-R-A-V-I-N-A, Darguzis, D-A-R-G-U-I-V-I-S. I'm actually waiting to change the last name when we were actually at the family ceremony. We got, we got married, well, oh no, her full name <laughs> is Regina Sabina Soifong Darguzis. And what nationality is that? She is half Czechoslovakian. She is half Chinese, half Lithuanian. Her mother is from Singapore. Oh, wow. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah, we got married the month before I deployed to Afghanistan. We just did the courthouse thing, and then this coming February, we actually have the big ceremony for all the family. Because it's just been with everything going on my military career with forced production, which is why I ended up having to get out, and then, you know, moving and everything like that. We just, just took forever for us to get this off the ground, but finally, it's like, yes, cool. we've got the date, we've got everything set up, she's got the dress, I mean, it's looking good. The only thing she's told me is that I better fit into my blues uniform. <laughs> <laughs> Children? None yet. No. Okay. Although, I don't know, cats, do they count? <laughs> no. Nah. Yeah, I don't think so. Um, how do 
high school you graduated from? Uh, Pittsburgh High School. P-I-T-T-S-B-U-R-G. No H. All right, and you are currently in college. What college are you going to? I'm going to Daytona State College. Yeah, yeah Daytona State College. Okay. And you started when? Um, yeah, September. Uh, I think it was September 4th. Of this year? Yes. Okay, so you're just in your first semester? Or yeah, I, well, I transferred transfer? uh, Yeah, I transferred from Strayer University because the program I was in for that just was not panning out well, and I was just not getting a good feeling from it, so I decided to transfer to a state college. Okay. That was closer to home, too. The year you first started attending college? Uh, that would be kind of the very, the, the, now is that before I went to join the military? Because I actually got college from before the military also. Okay. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. My, my college life is kind of all over the place. All right, let's do this. I'll just put uh, computer, yeah, it's computer related. Yeah, yeah, I'm going for college for uh, computer uh, for programming and analysis. Okay. Uh, I'll just put present for attending. Yeah, sorry, going to be so confusing on all this. No, it's all right. I, I just don't know you. I'm just getting to know you a little bit. And you were in the Air Force. Thank yeah. you for your service. Thank you for yours. You're welcome. And mine was quite a bit ago. I'm, I'm an old part. Yeah. You yeah. served, you served. And plus, with you guys, once a Marine, always a Marine. Yeah. I um, actually joined on the Marine's birthday. Oh, did you? That was, when I, yeah, that was the final swear in before they sent me to the basic training. So. Nice. Yeah, I actually caught a uh, guy who was trying to scam some money out of me on that. He's like, oh, yeah, I was a Marine. I'm like, oh, cool. I was Air Force. Yeah, I shake my hand. Cool. They asked me for some money because he's trying to go see his brother and blah, 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 blah. I'm like, oh, cool. But first, what's the Marine's birthday? Uh, I don't remember. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. Yeah, see, I can never remember the year, but I will always remember November 10th. He couldn't even tell me that much. So I'm like, yeah, I'll walk off. Yeah, I hate people like that. Anyway, okay, so the years you served? I served from 2008 until 2014. And your discharge type? Uh, honorable. Okay. Yeah. And your rank at the time of discharge? I was a senior airman, E4. Okay, now were you full time? Was it reserve? Was I, was, it I was full time active duty. Okay. Um, any issues while in the military at all that um, you ran across? Um, just, you know, I mean, I, my, my PIF did have some black marks in it, mostly stupid stuff. I actually got a lot of them after the stabbing attack because the doctor never properly documented my sleeping problems, so I was coming into work late and I was getting paperwork for that. Um, but nothing like grossly, you know, like no, I wasn't like, you know, getting into fights or anything like that. Okay. Um, ever been arrested? Uh, yes, juvenile. Juvenile, okay. And what, what was that for? Uh, that was, uh, do I have to discuss my juvenile record? You know, no, we, we don't. Okay. Well, <laughs> I'll just put it as juvenile. It, 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 well, it, it, it's a really jacked up uh, situation that happens. You guys understand. We all have life experiences. We yeah. all done stupid <laughs> shit when we were young. Yeah. And we've grown from those. You, you know, you're not actively still doing the same silly stuff. Yeah. So it, it's, it's all, all part of living mm -hmm. and growing up. And it's, it's called life. Yeah. And we're expected to do that because we're immature. We were young and we were stupid. And that's how you learn. Yeah. So, and no one here is going to judge you because I guarantee I've done probably worse than what you did probably. <laughs> uh, at some point, we've all done stupid stuff. So, yeah. Nah, basically, it was just um, my best friend's older sister was babysitting my siblings because they wouldn't listen to me. My mother was a single mother raising four kids. We lived in a farm, and this is where I lived in uh, Otis, Massachusetts. Kid, uh, kid that lived down the road kept sneaking over to our farm and opening all the doors, letting our animals out in the middle of the night, and we lived on a major highway. Mm -hmm. Well... I had to take the dogs out to the barn. She came with me to help me because I had a gold retriever and another dog. And, uh, I think it was a chocolate lab. And while we were out there, I'd forgotten to plug in the uh, cord that gave power to the barn in the house. So it was pitch black, and I thought I heard something upstairs. And I thought, oh, God, that little shit's upstairs. 
So, you know, not really thinking. I went over to the wall of tools and I grabbed the first thing that made same sense to me, which was a shovel head that had broken off the staff. Mm -hmm. I go up the stairs and she's following me. She was about a year or two older than I was. And, you know, she's kind of a little nervous about what's going on. So I'm like, okay, stay here at the top of the stairs. If anyone tries to run by you, stop them. She's like, okay. So I go walking around, but I can barely see anything because, you know, the moonlight, not really, you know, thinking too clearly, looking back. I'm walking, I hear floorboards creak, I see a shadow move out of the corner of my eye, turn around, upside the back of her head. Oh, she had moved and followed me. I didn't know. Okay. That's a simple mistake. Yeah, well, that simple mistake, unfortunately, went right down the worst roads possible. She freaks out. And I find out later that's because she had been raped by her three previous boyfriends and her uncle. So see, she had some severe issues with that. Mm -hmm. Her mother hated my mother because her kids felt more comfortable talking to my mother than her. So she forced Becky to press charges against me. State troopers in the area basically assumed I was trying to rape her or something. And then it just went from there. And we ended up having to leave the area. I moved to New Hampshire. They transferred my parole because they put me on parole because I pled guilty because rather than take it to court and have Becky's reputation utterly destroyed because my mother was her confidant, I made I, I took a hit because I'm not going to ruin my best friend's sister or his life over that. And just, I don't know, I, may, I probably could have won, but it's like I didn't want to hurt my friends. No, I, I completely understand. So... So you said they charge you with attempted? They, no, they, no, they, they, they charge you with hitting her. They, they, they charge you with that, but the prosecutor wanted me tried as an adult. I was only about 15. She wanted me tried as an adult, did not want me to be left around children. I mean, just, she just kept piling stuff on. Okay. And they never officially charged me with attempted rape or anything like that. Okay. But what I ended up pleading guilty to was reckless assault because the intent to hit was there, but not the intent to hit her. Right. When I got to New Hampshire, uh, the parole officer came to the house to meet me. We talked for several hours about the whole case. He got up and was like, by the way, your parole's over. And then my parole right there. Because he's like, had this happened anywhere else, you would have gotten a slap on the wrist in community service. But because it happened way out in the middle of nowhere where there's nothing going on, they had to make a big hubble out of it. Well, yeah. Uh, I'm sorry you had to go through that. Yeah, it sucks, but <laughs> yeah. In all honesty, it kind of turned out to be a good thing because that area was a terrible place to live if you were not someone who was born there. They treated everyone like an outsider. Well, if I'm not mistaken, they, they do that. Uh, I saw a show somewhere up, up in that area where they were very suspicious of people who weren't part of that community for a long period of time. And yeah, it's like you had to live there for 33.3 years before they would start to consider you a local. Yeah. Where I'm from in Pittsburgh, or where I'm living, or where I moved from in Pittsburgh, New Hampshire, everyone up there loves me. I mean, I get along great. Um, a lot of family, members, a lot of parents were actually telling their daughters, "Dump your boyfriend, date him. <laughs> He's a good guy." <laughs> uh, okay. Um, now your medical history, medical background. Uh, so you got stabbed multiple times. Yep. Okay. And what year was that? That was in uh, it, was, it was either 2010 or 2011. Okay. I can't quite remember off the top of my head because you know I don't really focus too much on it. I mean, the scars are there to remind me, but right. I mean, I've got the documentation of the house somewhere. Okay. What else have you gone to the hospital for? Um, Wisdom teeth removal, okay. emergency appendectomy in 2007. I had a just removed from my left wrist. Um, it was in 2012. Because it was after the stabbing, I remember that part. Because I have like very weird nerve and nerve feeling here. Um, 2013 or early 2014, I had a um, I had to have a kidney stone surgically removed because it was, as the doctor described it, a bottle of fish hooks, and I had hooked right at the entrance to where it would have fell into the bladder. That was not a fun time. No. Um, I was hospitalized while I was in Afghanistan due to a 
very severe and acute case of rhabdomyolysis. Which is? Um, basically, you know how when you work out and you know, your muscles hurt after a while? Mm -hmm. Well, imagine where your muscles are so badly hurt that they're actually bleeding protein into your bloodstream. Okay. And, you know, it's like literally, like, you're almost like in a constant state of cramped. Mm -hmm. Well, um, they ran blood tests on me, and my levels were that of someone who had a limb blown off or, were cr or had a severe crushing accident, even though I didn't. And I wasn't even working out that, that, that like, crazily or anything like that. They almost medevaced me because of it. But I spent uh, two nights uh, in the, uh, not in the ICU, but the ICW, because they really only had those two. Uh, in Afghanistan, and then I, you know, came home. Any issues with those nowadays? Uh, the Rapto, I, st um, I still have issues with it, but they didn't properly document or anything like that, so I kind of have to deal with it on my own, because the VA won't cover it. Um, mostly it's just muscle weakness, and I just cramp up really easily. Okay. And, you know, I'm trying to take supplements, drink more water, and like that, but it still, it still hurts and bothers me. Any heart issues, lung issues? No, I mean... Couple, I had a uh, I had whooping cough a couple of years, not too long ago, a couple of years ago. Okay. Yeah, actually, to make a resurgence back in the, in the left. Was my, my doctor actually had it when he diagnosed me. Nice. Yeah, I'm like, really? Wow! I could have sworn you were inoculated with that when we were children. But uh, yeah. <coughs> so, no major respiratory, no major heart issues or anything like that. Okay. Any seizures? Dizzy spells. Uh, I've had a couple of dizzy spells growing up where it's like I'd be sitting down watching TV, I'd get up, I'd see pretty colors, kind of feel, hear a little buzzing, and I'd kind of collapse, but I wouldn't lose consciousness. But nothing like, I was never officially seen by a doctor before. Okay. Um, so I guess you could say no. <laughs> Any medications you're currently taking right now? Um, just kind of self medicating myself for migraines and muscle soreness. And how do you self medicate? Um, uh, uh, Excedrin, you know, Excedrin migraine and uh, you know, ibuprofen, stuff like that. Okay, so over the counter stuff. Oh, okay. Nothing illegal, illicit, yes. or stuff I'm not supposed to do. Okay. Um, any mental issues you've been diagnosed with? Um, I found out after the fact when I got out, but I guess they diagnosed me with um, and with a, like an anxiety disorder while I was in the military after the stabbing incident, but I mean, I don't, rec I don't remember them ever telling me that, and they didn't really, I mean, I saw the therapist a couple of times, and that was about it. Okay, anything you're medicated for, no, nothing like that? No. When was the last time you seen someone for it? Um, anxiety. I was, I was sort of kind of seen after I got out when I reported to the VA up in uh, Port Orange, but, you know, they never really, you know, said, did anything with me. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm a very nervous individual. I mean, I've been noticing as I've been getting closer to the parole date for the guy who tried to stab me, I've been a little bit more antsy and anxious. Other than that, I mean, nothing really over the, over the top. I get it. Any tobacco use? No. Okay. I tried that when I was a kid, didn't like it. <laughs> Alcohol use? Rarely. I drink maybe once or twice every couple of months, if that. And when you drink, what is it, beer? Uh, I prefer hard liquor, although a friend of mine actually introduced me to some of the, uh, the Apple um, beers that have come out recently, and I actually like those. It's pretty good. I just, I've never gotten a taste for regular beer. Okay. Uh, when was the last time you were intoxicated? Like, blitzed out of my mind intoxicated, or like just... And Enough where you couldn't drive operate a motor vehicle. I honestly couldn't tell you it's been that long. I don't drink to in a while. Yeah, I don't drink to get that I don't drink to like get that way anymore. Okay. Remember the very first time I got really blitzed? I think we all remember <laughs> Yeah, so I'd never drink again. I'm sure we've all done that too. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. it was all underage. Technically. Mm -hmm. I was hopping the border into Canada and I was eighteen, so I was legal in Canada. Oh, and, I they, and they hadn't changed the laws where internal possession was an issue at that point in time, so I and mean, I wasn't driving on the way home, so yeah. Caffeine use. Makes sense. <laughs> I wear a knife. Okay, so coffee, soda? Coffee, Mountain Dew, soda, yeah. Okay. I try to stay away from the caffeine pills, though. Those things make me just 
Yeah, you'll just start shaking. Oh, God. And I remember the very first time I took them, back when I was still in high school, it made me really angry for some reason. I guess I don't do all the stimulants on that, on that level. So, and so when was the last time you took any of those? Um, more than 10 years. Okay. Yeah, so I mean, yeah, I've never, that's, like I said, when I learn something, I try to stay away from it when it turns out to be bad. Right. It's just not my thing. The very first time you tried marijuana? Never. Never tried marijuana? Never. What illicit drug have you ever tried? Never. Never tried anything? Okay. I just need to find out that before we, no, I understand. Okay. No, I, I'm, I know a lot of people don't believe me when I tell them that. I've had opportunities to, but usually those opportunities came when I had a new job interview coming up and a drug test would have been necessary, so I would just, nope. Okay. And I smell it, it just makes me nauseous. Yeah, I don't, I don't care for it either. Yeah, I mean, I understand in some cases it actually has helped people medically, but yeah. I don't know, it just turns me off. I'm with you there. All right, so, um, I just wanted to get to know you a little bit, mm -hmm. and I have to fill out a few things on, on here. Yeah. Um, so, Stephen, tell me a little bit about, um, well, first, we, we were talking about the Air Force. Yep. Um, you got out there, um, then you've been doing the security for how long? Uh, about six months, a little over six months now. Six months. So, okay. with, the, with this company, I used to do uh, in-house security at a resort before I joined the military, and then in the military, I was also... Uh, part of a hospital security team as well because okay. I was a pharmacy tech in the Air Force. Okay. Well, why did you continue doing that when you got out? I hated it. I it was good money. Yes and no. Florida's, repu Florida's reputation for how they treat their techs and their pharmacists is not good. Five, oh, really? I'm sorry, not five. Four out of the five new civilian pharmacists we got at my base were from Florida. They swore they would never come back to the state ever again wow. because of it. Right. Well, most of the companies that handle the staffing will chew you up and spit you out. Like right before you get ready to, you know, start getting the, the good money, the benefits aren't that bad, lay you off. Huh. Or they'll just slash your hours. Interesting. And at the time, when I was in, they didn't require us to be nationally certified. And I don't have my national certification. It's a $300 test with an 80% failure rate. Yeah. Don't exactly have that kind of money sitting around to risk throwing at a test that I more than likely will fail. Uh, I get you there. Yeah, plus, I mean, unless I was going to be going into an inpatient pharmacy, I'm not doing outpatient. I just, counting pills all day is just boring. <laughs> Seriously, when they put me up into inpatient, I'm like, yes. I learned so much in there. I mean, you know, the difference is, you know, having a judge by body weight, infants, I mean, all these interesting things that I learned, especially when I was in Afghanistan. Cool. All right, so you started doing security um, with Vital in uh, April. In April. And when did you start working at, what is it, Uptown? Uptown. Uh, How long have you been working at Uptown? I want to say June or July. It was one of the J months. Okay. They all kind of blurred together because I was still working on both posts until recently, and I'm only exclusively at Uptown. And eventually, they're actually going to be popping it to where we'll probably have cars seven nights a week, and I'll probably be working five nights a week there. Okay, so how many nights a week do you work there now? Four. Four. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Okay, and are you the only one that works there? Yes, I'm the only officer that works that site. Okay, and so you report to who? I report to my supervisor, uh, Stephen Patrick. And is he there also, or is he down at Fort Orange? Or is no, he, he's, he's, a, he's a lieutenant, so he kind of is everywhere. All right, so... Do you do a daily log or? Okay, we have uh, daily activity reports that have to be um, completed at the end of every shift. And where do those reports go? Um, I take a digital co I take a digital scan of it mm -hmm. and I send it to my supervisor. And recently now I've started also sending that in addition to any pictures I take over the evening to the property manager and the hard copies go into the Dropbox for the property manager. Okay. So what is basically your duties? My duties there are to patrol the, are to patrol the building, to the, patrol the perimeter, and patrol the parking garage, make sure that we don't have any unauthorized access, no one's attempting to break in. You know, I mean, general security stuff. Typical security stuff. Yeah, it's an unarmed site, so, you know. Okay. Pretty much observe and report. So do you have an armed license or not? I do not have a G license. Okay. Um, now, do you have a typical parking space where you, when you like assigned to you when you get there? Or? No, I um, I actually, um, company policy to a point is we're supposed to arrive on 
post in uniform. Mm -hmm. I've actually spoke with my supervisor and his and his captain, and I've told them that I do not like going to work in uniform because I would rather the employees not really be able to recognize me because some of them don't recognize me if I'm in civilian attire. Mm -hmm. Because I have had problems with employees that are not employees with residents in that building before, and I'd rather them not be able to figure out which car is mine. I actually will park my car in different areas. Um, oh, okay. That way, so, so there's not a particular area where you're supposed to park your car. Yeah, no. I mean, right. the, the, so there's not a sign parking. No. There okay. used to be, but they they stopped that. Okay. And so you said you've had a couple problems with some residents. Like what kind of problems? Um, the minor ones are just you know drunken idiots making too much noise, not really wanting to listen to me. You had one guy go straight up chest to chest with me, like pressing his chest against me, trying to instigate a fight with me because I dared to tell him, hey, guys, you need to keep it quiet in the hallways because it was his birthday. Okay. I reported that to the office because it's like, I'm not dealing with this idiot. And he, I guess, and his girlfriend or whatever got a 30-day notice and were evicted as of September. Nice. Yeah. It's, nice it's nice when the office actually has our backs. Yeah, support. Yeah, that support. Yeah, that support. Oh, God. So good. <laughs> And so what else? Um, what other issues that have you had? Those are the major ones, you know, people trying to use the pool after hours. Um, so I've had some people, oh, I did have a junkie try to pick a fight with a guy that's about twice as big as I am one night, but at first I was just going to kind of stand back, observe the situation, and laugh while well, the junkie's getting his ass kicked by this guy because the guy's built like a linebacker until the junkie started reaching and checking his back. At which point I'm like, uh, if he's got a weapon, this is going to go bad real quick. So I'm like, all right, people, I've got three. I've got a resident, two guests. I'm like, I need you guys to get to the building now. And they just kind of scoff at first. And, you know, the guy keeps throwing her curling insults at the junkie. The junkie's kind of just, you know, twitchy, moving around, kept reaching for his side. I'm like, no, I need you guys in there now. And I back up um, through, because we're right in front of the entrance to the um, parking garage gate. So we back in. So they go in. I back up through the gate and wait till it closes. The guy keeps wandering around for a bit, then kind of heads across the street to the bushes. And I called the police on that because uh, I did not want to run the risk of someone else walking around there and this guy possibly attacking them. So, okay. Um, um, other than that, I mean, and I had another guy checking cars once, trying to get into cars, see if they were unlocked. I mean, no one's really, other than that one guy, no one's really gotten, like, altercation-like with me. I have not gotten to, I've never had anyone actually openly try to fight me, other than that one dude. Um, most of the time, we just have to deal with drunk idiots like you know, like are saying, "This is bullshit." Blah 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 blah. blah. And the night when actually everyone was there for this incident, I had two girls that got locked out of their apartment by a roommate, and one of them kind of lost her shit and was like literally kicking and slamming and pounding that door to the point where she woke up some other residents. Not the same night that this happened. Well, the night that all the, all the officers were there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Saturday. Saturday. Yeah. Saturday night. This past Saturday night. This uh, past Saturday. Yeah. yeah. In fact, actually, one of the officers had come out of the elevator, and um, the first time I actually had to deal with these two girls that night, they'd come back later with two guys. I guess they were going to try to have the guys break the door down. I'm like, no, do not do that, please, guys. I've got the property manager here. She will have you arrested. So let me try and find out what I can do. Um, um, but, uh, to be perfect, I mean, this post is pretty low key. I mean, very quiet. Just mostly got to deal with her noise complaints and drunks. Um, what else? What are, what are the main issues you might have with the residents there that um, you have to report? Really, anything that I see that's uh, environment. I mean, I don't even have post orders there yet. I've been waiting for those. They're supposed to be given to me soon. We're probably going to be changing them now too. But um, uh, people wedging the doors open because there are. There are some doors where you just need a key fob to get in. There are others that are strictly exit only. You can't open them from the outside. But because of the way the building is designed, sometimes it's easier to just go out those doors. And a lot of people you know, put a rock down to try and keep the door open. My first week there, I had a homeless person sleeping on the stairwell. Oh, of course you did. And then I got chewed out by my boss when I took it upon myself to politely ask the lady to leave, which after a 20-minute rant about her whole life story, she left without incident. Turns out I was supposed to call the police and have them take a look at it. Well, you know, I'm not, I'm, I've never really had to deal with homeless people before, so I mean, I just figure, okay, you know, treat, you know, treat them like I treat everyone, treat them with respect and dignity, and for the most part, they should be cooperative. Right. Okay, so the so police came on Saturday mm -hmm. night. Yep, they were there actually before I got there. Okay. I actually had shown up about 30 minutes early. 
Okay. Um, let's see here. So, when was the last time you saw? What's her name? I I think. Well, I know because I you know saw the uh, news stuff that it's like Sasha something or other. Okay, Sasha. Okay. So when when was the last time you had? Okay. Yeah, well, what, was it the night before? Yeah, it was uh, Friday night. Okay, so when you first had contact with her on Friday night, yep. what was the situation? Um, I had been doing a perimeter patrol, and I had come upon three girls that were at the Marks and North Orange entrance, and, you know, looked like they were trying to get inside the building. So I'm like, the evening ladies, I have an issue with the thing, and then, you know, I'm kind of chuckling because I see that happen all the time with the drunks. Mm -hmm. Well, as I'm starting to walk off, then I get called over by two of the ladies. And they told me that um, that this was their friend, and they really didn't know her. They <laughs> found her wandering around downtown somewhere in kind of a drunken, you know, stupor. I mean, her the way she was moving, she looked like she was pretty out of it. And um, they got—I guess—they got out of her where she lived, so they brought her to uptown. But she didn't have her key fob with her. She didn't have her keys. She didn't even have any ID. And I'm like, well, if she doesn't have any of that, I cannot help her. I cannot allow her into the building based mm -hmm. on what you know, what my policies are. Right. Well, as I'm talking to them, another resident, a male, an older gentleman, comes up, and he sees us all there, and he kind of chuckles. He's like, you guys aren't all robbers, are you? I'm like, no, sir. And, you know, kind of looking at my uniform. And he's like, okay. Opens the door, walks in, she follows. Finish talking with the ladies. I go in. You know, intent on, okay, finding where this girl is to make sure that, you know, she actually is supposed to be here. She's not just wandering around the building. Well, she was just wandering around the building for a while. Finally, I guess she gets to her apartment, uh, 345, and she's trying to enter in the code. She's got one of those digital deadbolt things with the buttons on the outside where you can enter in a code. And how did you find her on the third floor? I patrolled. I, I checked the buildings. Okay. I, I checked the floor. So how did she get up there, do you know? Uh, Either elevator or stairs. There, are, you know, multiple. There are two different elevators and four different stairwells in the building. And so you don't know how she got out there, but mm -hmm. you were just patrolling. You used to, you you come across her mm -hmm. on the third floor. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And so she's doing that, and you know, it's like I cannot let someone just hang around in the building, trying, you know, outside their apartment. If you know, say if they got locked out, what and I. Didn't know exactly what to do because, I mean, she's obviously intoxicated. I mean, completely gone. So have you ever seen her before? No, never. Never seen her before? No, actually, at first I thought she was a different female who we've had issues with that the local police over there are actually familiar with because she's had other issues where she's, like, gone home with guys completely out of her mind drunk and, I guess, called them because they're like, oh, my God, this guy, I don't know where I am. I'm in this guy's bathroom. Kind of but this is not her. Not, this is not her. No. Oh, okay. Now that one lives in I think 320. I actually had to deal with that apartment twice because first time she got locked out. Second time she locked her roommate out. But um, yeah, so she thought maybe she had had her key, she left her keys in her car. So she asked me if I would bring her to the parking garage because since she doesn't have a key fob, she wouldn't be able to get back into the building. So I'm like, sure, whatever. I've dealt with this before with other drunks who have done stuff like that. So I walk out with her and before we even get to a car she's like wait I think I remember the number now so we go back in I bring her to the door she's there put punching the numbers away trying to you know remember what it is and I'm just thinking to myself god damn it not exactly the smartest or not not the smartest but the most professional way to be thinking this but I have to babysit a lot of trucks in that place oh and trust me just a pain in my ass so I'm like okay look I'm going to leave you here, keep trying to, you know, plug away at this. When I come back, if you have not figured this out, we're going to have to do something about this, which is either she's going to have to figure out, get, get a, somehow get a hold of a friend, or I'm going to be calling the PD and have them deal with her. Okay. When I come back around after walking around, she's not there. So I'm like, okay, she must be in the building. She must have gotten in the because I checked the building, there was no sign of her. Now, do you have a, a residence log so you know who lives in what apartment? So I do. I confirm, but I can't because she has no idea. Well, because she can't. She tell you what her name is, and you can look it up and make yeah. sure. Yeah. Well, I could. I could have. Yeah, I could have done that. Um, when they were going through the um, call box initially, they um, she said what her name was, and it did come up on the on the on the log. I remember that now. But without her phone to dial herself in, 
she wouldn't have been able to access the building at right. But um, plus, you know, most of the residents there will not let some random person into the building. They will actually like just no, you come in with whoever you're supposed to be coming with, or you call them up. They will not just let people in. So when that gentleman let her in, I assumed, oh, he knows that she lives here. And then later on in the evening during my patrol, I thought I saw her again with the, with some guy. You thought you saw the same girl? Was yeah, I mean, I didn't really get a good look at her face, but the height, the hair, and the skin color was about the right, about the same thing. And again, like I said, I'd never seen this woman before, so. Was she wearing the same clothes? Well, the pants were, I think, the same, but I think she had changed her top to, like, a white top or something. Again, they weren't doing anything that was really out of the ordinary, so I just kind of glanced at them and just continued on my patrol. So when you saw her, when you, you were escorting her to her car, when you first made contact with her, she, oh, was wearing, right. she was wearing a purple top and white pants. Purple top yep, and white pants. Yes. Okay. Um, you remember what kind of shoes or anything like that? Mm, I think sandals. Okay. Yeah. All right. She was walking, as I call it, flat foot. <laughs> flat, 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 flat. <laughs> And uh, she could barely walk. I mean, she's stumbling all over the place. At one point, she's like kind of hanging on to me, trying to try to stay on her feet. <laughs> so I mean, this girl was gone. Okay. And so when you came back, mm -hmm. she wasn't around. No. Nope. And I did not see her when I searched the entire building and the parking garage and the perimeter. Okay. Um, at any point, did you knock on the door to see if she was okay? Or no? I mean, uh, to be honest. Once they're in their apartment, they're really is they're not really my responsibility because it's a condo. They're not actually apartments right. owned by the building, so I, it's not really my responsibility to check up on people. Plus, I'm not allowed to go into apartments, especially if there's only one person there. I would actually probably have to, I would have had to either have another person in the in the apartment with them, preferably someone of you know the opposite sex, right. or a male or whatever, or a police officer with me. Because that's the liability I am not setting my foot into. Okay. Because I've had other residents invite me in, you know, say, oh, hey, yeah, you want a Pepsi? You want a Coke or anything like that? I've, had, uh, I've been propositioned by uh, residents before, and it's like, no, I am not going in there. Well, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. It's, it's a liability that's just not worth the risk. I get it. Um, so I guess it's fair to say you've never been in her apartment. Never. Okay. Well, this should be pretty easy. Um, and so the next day, what time did you leave that day? I leave about, uh, well, I get off shift at 6 a.m., but usually I don't leave until like 20, 30 minutes later because of finishing up my report, changing into civilian clothes. That particular day, I'd actually uh, taken some trash out to the dumpster because I found some uh, after I turned in my report. So I figured, okay, let's throw it away. And where did you find the trash? That was in the hallway. Um, I think it was on the second floor. So about like three bags worth. Do you remember what apartment it was in front of? No, unfortunately I don't. I just, as I was walking through, I saw, I'm like, huh, I'm on my way out anyway. Do you normally do that? Or I just saw it on the way out. I mean, if I'm on duty, I will I take snapshots of it and I leave it there, let the office deal with it, but I was already off duty and I wasn't going to just fill out a whole new report just for three bags of trash. So I just said, screw it. I'll be nice for the housekeeping person. I'll just throw it away for them. All right. And so there was three bags of trash. Yep. Did you look in and see what it was or anything? No, they were tied off and I just grabbed them and threw them. And what kind of bags were they? Um, white, just like your white hefty bags, I guess. Oh, like regular? Yeah, just regular trash bags with kitchen yeah. bags. Yeah, with the red uh, drawstring bags or whatever. Okay, and you took them out to the dumpster? To the dumpster. Yeah. And you did that on your way out to leave, or did you take that out? I, I took them out, and I came back in to get my stuff, and then I left. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. I was heading towards where I leave my stuff, and then I saw that, so I was like, screw it. Throw it away. Came back. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then, go uh home. -huh. So you go home, mm -hmm. and you come back the next day at what time? Uh, about nine thirty ish. I had gotten there. I'd gotten there early because I make good time. And I saw that there were two police vehicles parked over by the um, little parking area before you get into the garage. So I stopped, went over to the officers, identified myself as a security officer for the building, you know, just because I you know, want to know what's going on. I figured right. maybe there was a car accident or something like that, at which point, 
they told me they were here doing a check on uh, check on well-being. Yeah, well-being, or actually, I think they said missing persons because I think there were a couple of people there that I guess were um, they identified as their friends. Okay. And um, they asked me if I had a way to get into any of the apartments, which I don't. And he's like, oh, well, could you go to this apartment and meet the officer there? I'm like, yeah, sure. Go into the building, park, go over to the third floor, and I meet with the officer, and he's there punching in numbers, trying, I guess, checking to see if it was a police officer or write code for these kind of locks or something. But he couldn't access it. And he asked me if I had keys. I'm like, no, don't have access to the apartments. So when you got there, were you in uniform that time? Yep. No, I was, uh, I was wearing... Um, uh, Deadpool shirt and pants and, you know, my shoes. So did you change first before you went up there? Or you no, just went no I went straight there because I wasn't actually on duty yet. I was oh, still okay. off duty. Okay. And when we, you know, couldn't get access to officers, like, well, if you want to go change, you know, go ahead. You know, we're gonna, we're gonna, we'll still be here. I'm like, okay. So how did they get into the apartment, you know? Um, I honestly do not. I think they either got a hold of either the family or the actual owner of the condo who was renting it, and they had the code. Okay. I pretty much, um, once they were doing their thing, I pretty much stayed away from them because I didn't want to you know, bother them. And if they needed me for anything, they just called me. Okay. Um, and so when was the first time you found out that she was deceased? Um, it was later on that evening. About what time? I honestly don't remember. I remember them saying that they, uh, initially when they told me something was going on, they said, well, we have a crime scene. That's all we're telling you. So I'm like, okay, well, I gotta call my boss. And later that night, I guess the property manager said that she, either they told her or she overheard, I can't quite remember, but they said that they discovered a body. Okay, so. Now, have you heard how she was, how she died at all? No, I mean, I heard a lot of, um, you know, possibilities because I was talking to my boss and he's like, well, you know, based on what you said, I mean, she was that drunk, she could have died in her sleep from alcohol poisoning. Mm -hmm. um, I have been following the news and I guess now they're saying that this is a homicide investigation. So I'm assuming, well, when they don't know, so they, they assume stuff like that? When you, they always investigate as a homicide until they can rule it otherwise. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I literally, I still, other than what the news has said, I just know what I've been told by the property manager, the officers, and my boss, which hasn't been much. Okay, so you have no idea how, what her cause of death is? No. No, okay. No. Never overheard anybody say anything about that, or you have any speculation as to how she may have passed? No. Okay. I mean, other than, like I said, what they told me, I mean, as bad as it sounds, I kind of hope. It was, you know, she just died of alcohol poisoning because if not, it's like, you know, well, how old was she? I don't know. Decimation. In her 20s, maybe? Wow, that young? I oh, mean, it could be mid to late 20s. I don't know. I'm terrible at judging ages. I mean, okay. when I first met my mother-in-law, I thought she was in, you know, her mid to late 50s. Turns out she's almost 8 years old. Wow. Then again, she's Asian, so, you know, they kind of are hit or miss. Yeah, they, they look young forever, or they turn ancient in a heartbeat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my wife has actually been mistaken for a high school student a few times. Yeah, well, uh, God bless her. <laughs> yeah, tell me about it. <laughs> okay. Um, so, let's see here. All right. Well, I'm doing some kind of formulating some kind of questions in my head based on what you're telling me. Um, Um, what can you tell me about polygraph? Um, with the lie detector, I know you're going to be sticking electro electrode things or whatever, you know, basically sensors to me and it's going to measure my response based on the questions you ask me. Yeah. Yes, no, it's kind of it. The, the media back in the early 20s mm -hmm. dubbed it as a lie detector. And it's not really a lie detector. Um, it, it's no, no more lie detector than it is a truth detector. Mm -hmm. Um, basically, what I'll be doing is um, constantly recording your physiological changes in your body. Mm -hmm. Now, what are those? You ever heard of fight, flight, or freeze? Yep. Okay. That is counter that <laughs> personally. <laughs> exactly. Um, so that's that's basically what it how it works mm -hmm. is our the way our bodies react to certain dangers or stresses. Okay. Um, obviously, you're probably nervous here today because you never had a polygraph. Yeah. Your nervousness is not going to affect the test whatsoever. Okay. Um, what's going to happen, um, 
You've never had a polygraph before, you said earlier. No. Okay. I never went for. I never actually got a top secret security clearance, so I never was required to take one in the Air Force. Okay. Well, it's not a big deal. Um, we'll we'll talk about it. And I'll explain everything to you before we even get started. Okay. Um, and since you've never had a polygraph before, I'll give you a sample test. Okay. And there's a few reasons for that. Um, one, it'll allow you to have the components attached to you mm -hmm. and actually go through a test, see what it's like. Yep. And realize that nothing here is going to hurt you. There's not going to be anything shocking you. No, I didn't hope that. You, <laughs> nothing like that. The, the the worst thing about it is the blood pressure cuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, your hand will get tingly a little bit. That's all it is. Uh, I'm sure you've been to the doctors before and you what? had your blood pressure check. Yeah, actually, um, that happens to me even without it. Like I could just be sitting like this and this whole side of my arm will go numb. And what causes that? That that muscle. Uh, that's actually something I just remember now. Um, I have actually been diagnosed as uh, having um, nerve myopathy, is it? Like that? I, um, in this arm, but I'm pretty sure it's in both um, on the nerves on this part of the arm. But they, they assume it's just because of the way my arms rest when I'm typing at the keyboard that it's caused some kind of like a corporal tunnel thing, kind of thing. Kind of, but it, instead of like it causing pain, it just causes numbness. Okay. Well, good. My night, it may actually help you not feel. Uh, Pressure from the cuff. Awesome. <laughs> and so I honestly, some of my medical stuff, unless it's like something major, I really don't pay that much attention to it, which is probably not a good idea. Well, it, we'll, we'll do the sample test. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll go over that whole thing. Um, and then we'll get into a couple yeah, of different yeah. things. Yeah, well, I'll do a couple different kind of tests. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, the reason that, that they wanted you to come down is they're trying to clear everybody that was even associated with her near the time of her death. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And so, yeah, from what he took, from what says Detective Montford told me, I don't know, there's a pretty good chance that I'm probably the last person I saw her alive. If that other guy, if it was actually her, I saw that other guy. Well, you know, the good thing is, is many, 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 many years ago, because mm -hmm. I've been doing this for 17 years, mm -hmm. um, before I started doing this, I got accused of doing something that I didn't do. Not saying you're being accused of anything, but I'm just saying I'm pretty um, sure that the detectives would have been treating differently if, uh, if yeah, I was you've been thought I mean, it's it's just a matter of illumination. Okay. Like I said, when, when they have someone who, who passes away and they're not sure, sure they have to treat it like a homicide. Mm -hmm. So, um, but many, many years ago, I got accused of something I didn't do, and, and the detective offered me a polygraph, and, I, and it was able to vindicate me. Okay. And, and so after that, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to help other people. You know, and, and this comes in handy, especially in cases like this, because I'm, I'm able to, you know, clear a, a bunch of people doing, you know, not doing what they are claiming to do, or, or in this case, just making sure that there's, there's nothing else to it, and it gives the detective, you know, okay, we can say that we investigated that part and we're, we're moving on, mm -hmm. um, and, you know, they still have a bunch of stuff that they're waiting on anyway, so, um, so get back to the fight fighter freeze. Mm -hmm. Um, you all drive all the way here from Port Orange four times a week. How do you get here? I four? Yeah, uh, yeah, I take I four. Okay, so I, I can almost assure you that driving all the way here from I four, there's certain times where you're driving and you've been that corner, and there's that damn state trooper in the median. Mm -hmm. Actually, no, I can see that from quite a ways away, but yeah. Well, but when you see him, mm -hmm. what happens? Nothing, I'm already going about 60, 65 miles an hour. So, no, you, never, you never had one where it kind of, you're like, oh crap. No, I've had that happen a few times. Well, and that's what I'm getting at. You know, mm -hmm. when, you're, when your mind looks over and perceives, oh crap, I might get a ticket. Whether you're speaking or not, you know, you still do that. You know, you're just like, oh, and you, and because you, you're not 100% sure that you're speaking or not. So you look down, but you freeze, and your foot comes off the gas. Mm -hmm. You're not thinking of doing that. Your mind automatically does it. It calls the autonomic system. Okay, and that's the survival mechanism we all have in our brain that's attached to our nervous system. So when your mind perceives danger of getting in trouble or anything like that, it reacts in order to prepare yourself to survive that situation. So you see the trooper and, and you freeze up, your foot comes off the gas, you're looking at it, it's like, oh, I'm going to five over. Cares. And you keep looking, keep looking, and he doesn't come out. So but what's going on inside you when you freeze and your foot comes off is that your autonomic system sends a signal down to your adrenal gland, mm -hmm. starts producing adrenaline. So what does that do to you? Gets you ready to fight or flight. Right. It raises your heart rate. Mm -hmm. 
you'll breathe a little change, and you'll feel that, that cold flash come over you, that, that, that yeah, cold it's like, it's like that, that, that tingly feeling of like, okay, something's going down, kind of thing. Yeah, you, you'll sweat a little bit, you know, I mean, you get nervous, you always see people go like this, <laughs> their hands. Yeah. So all that stuff's going on, and you're not telling your body to do that. You're not constantly, consciously thinking, okay, heart rate, speed up. Breathing change, you know, okay, I need you to sweat a little bit, I need to cool down because my heart rate went from here to here in a very short period of time. Yeah. You're not thinking of that, it's all doing that automatically, okay. So, all that stuff's going on, and then the trooper doesn't come out, and you realize, okay, he's not He's not going to be coming out after me, so what happens? You relax, and your heart rate goes back down. Exactly, there's no more danger of getting in trouble, mm-hmm. so everything comes back down normal. Okay, mm-hmm. so that's what the polygraph does. It's measuring your heart rate, mm-hmm. it's measuring your breathing, and it's measuring your electrical activity in your fingers. Now, what does that mean? We all have electrical, we're all electrical beings. Yeah, 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 all, all, yeah. all that stuff. So, we also sweat. Mm-hmm. Okay, and so we have, we have these finger plates that are going to your fingers, mm-hmm. and it's, it'll be constantly recording whether your, your electrodermal activity is re- more resistant, Mm-hmm. or more conductive. So when you sweat, it's going to become more or conductive, more conductive. So it, it, it'll be constantly recording that. That could be bad, though, because I sweat like a pig in Florida. <laughs> we all do. <laughs> yeah, like I'm, from the, I'm from, you know, in the northern area of New Hampshire. I'm right on the Canadian border. Right. With this, what this does, man, I'm sorry. It, you know, like I said, I'm going to, I'm going to calibrate the system to you. I'm not the person I tested earlier today. Okay. Um, so all all that stuff, I want to get it to, because you're going to be normal the whole time you're here, mm-hmm. okay? The only difference is, is, is if there's a stressor that kicks your autonomic system in, mm-hmm. okay? And the stressors that I'm going to be giving you are certain questions, okay? Um, now, did you do any research online about polygraph? Because I know you were told about this yesterday. Uh, it's okay if you did, but there's good stuff and bad stuff out there. I mean, honestly, I, I, I figured it probably would be better not to. That way I don't overstress myself. Mm-hmm. Um, I just, you know, just based on what I know from, like, you know, TV, movies, and shit like that, that's pretty much all I know. Okay. only reason why I ask is, like I said, there's good stuff and bad stuff out there. Um, just be mindful, and the reason I ask this, and I tell this to everybody, is that, um, you know, the bad stuff is there's people out there that claim they can teach you how to do right. polygraph. Mm-hmm. Okay, we got the little tack and the shoe, and do this and do <laughs> yeah, that. I've heard that one before. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, what they failed to tell you is, like, that's a, a pain reaction. Yeah. Pain looks different than emotion mm-hmm. on the charts. Mm-hmm. They don't tell you that, though, because they're not mm-hmm. they're not polygraph examiners. They don't know what they're talking about. They just think that they... Plus, well, that probably did work back in the day before the technology probably got more refined. It's very refined now. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, this instrument is very sensitive. Any of the questions I give you, you're not going to have that big, oh, crap. Yeah, just reaction. Like one or something. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 this is very sensitive instruments and then it'll pick up the slightest little deviation in your physiological changes on our body. Um, we'll have the blood pressure cuff, you want to put that on your forearm yep. and not up here because like I said your hand will get a little tingly mm-hmm. but I, I don't want to make you any I don't want to just call and that's measuring your systolic blood pressure, your heart rate. Mm-hmm. Okay. Then there's these funny looking tubes over here. Mm-hmm. It's like accordions. Yeah. One's going to go on your upper chest, the other one's going to go on your upper abdomen, okay. and that measures your breathing. Mm-hmm. Okay. If there's a rubber band inside, and just inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, is all it does. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, then you have the finger plates, like I said. Mm-hmm. They're going to go on your right hand. One's going to go on your index finger. Okay. Yep. Mm-hmm. And the other one's going to go on your ring finger. Okay. On, on your right hand. Yep. Okay. Okay, and the reason we do that is because it spreads out the electrical field mm-hmm. so that when it becomes more resistant, more and more conductive, it'll have a better read. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Lastly, there's that funny looking patch you on. Did you even see that? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I noticed that. I'm feeling that butt. Normally, it would have been inside the chair. Okay. okay. I just have a different belief system than most polygraph examiners. Um, I believe that if I expect you not to come in and have anything to hide, why should I have to hide anything from you? Mm-hmm. So that's kind of like my hour branch to everybody. Instead of sliding in the, in the seat the pad behind, yeah. and you're not knowing, oh, just like, why is this cord coming from the chair? I put it out there for everyone to see. I have nothing to hide from you. You know, this is your test, not mine. Mm-hmm. Right? I should. I look down and see. <laughs> hey, well, that's what this all is. It's all yeah. about integrity and uh, just being honest. You only need two things here to 
acid test, and that's 100% honesty and 100% cooperation. Awesome. That's all you need. Okay. Um, the seat pad um, is there. It's not a scorable marking on the charts. Mm -hmm. All it is there for is a countermeasure detector. It measures your lower body movement. You wiggle your little pinky toe. Mm -hmm. I'll be able to see that on the chart. You squeeze your your butt or anything. I'll see that on the chart. These are all we're all trained mm -hmm. to detect countermeasures, and only 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 someone using countermeasures is someone that has something high. Mm -hmm. Um, so I also look for those during the test. And like I said, now I do have a, I do have a tendency to wiggle my toes and stuff like that. I'm just normally without the approach. What do you want? Should I try not to do that for this? Yeah, remember I said 100 percent cooperation. Yep. Now only during the test. And the test usually lasts about five minutes a piece. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, the thing with during the test itself, mm -hmm. I'm going to ask that you do not move whatsoever except for breathing normal. Mm -hmm. I need you to breathe. That's very important. important. Oh, yeah. Otherwise, I'll pass out. Extremely important. Don't think about the breathing or anything. I just need you to, you know, I'm going to have your face on the wall. Mm -hmm. Not me because I don't want you, to, I don't want to be a distraction to you. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. I close my eyes, too. No. Don't have your eyes open. Okay. Okay. Um, just find a nice little spot on the wall. It's kind of, mm -hmm. and you'll find a spot and just stare at it or whatever. Um, but just be relaxed. You know? I'm going to have your feet flat on the floor just like you are and sit straight up. Look straight ahead, eyes open, do not move, and answer each question with simple yes or no. Okay. It's very, very simple. Any questions of me so far? No, no not really. I mean, I, you're telling me everything I need to know, I think. I mean, you're telling me, you're, you're not trying to hide anything from me, which is awesome. I like that. I, I, that that's not my role. That's really not my role. I, all I'm here to do is, you know, they, they requested that. Mm -hmm. um, I run some tests. You're not the only one being tested. No, I'm sure. Um, so it's just a part of their investigation, which um, is perfect. I know, which is why I, which is why I agreed to come in for this. No, I appreciate it. I mean, it, it, there, you, you shouldn't have any reason to hide anything anyway. So um, the sample test. Mm -hmm. uh, the simple, uh, the sample test is is just a play on numbers. Okay, it has nothing to do with why we're here today. It's just specifically there. For, well, it's twofold. Mm -hmm. One of it is because you never had a polygraph, it allows you to feel less like to, to take a test. Realize nothing's going to hurt you. Two, it allows me to calibrate the system. You, not the first time I tested earlier. Yeah. And there's a third reason, um, but I'll explain that here in a second. Okay. Um, what I need you to do, and this is a, just a play on numbers, it has nothing to do with why we're here today. Okay. All right, it's just a, a sample test so you can get through it. All right. Um, what I need you to do is on these lines right here, mm -hmm. I need you to write the numbers 92, 93, all the way through 98. Okay. Big enough so you can see it. Now, what I need you to do is circle number 95. A little bit. All right, so now we're going to practice how this test is going to go. These are the questions on the test. Okay. Regarding the number you circled on that piece of paper, did you circle number 92? No, I did not. Just a simple yes or no. Okay. Did you circle number 93? No. Did you circle number 94? No. Did you circle number 95? Yep. Excellent. However, what I want you to do on this particular test and this test alone mm -hmm. is when I ask you if you circle number 95, I want you to say no. Okay. So write the word no next to here. And what are you doing when you say no? Lying. Like the word lie. All right. And like I said, that's the only time I want you to do this. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. Did you circle number 95? No. Did you circle number 96? No. Did you circle number 97? No. Did you circle number 98? No. Excellent. Any questions about that? No. Okay. The reason I'm doing this is because I want to see what it looks like when you lie. Okay. All right? Yeah. Um, Hopefully it doesn't look the same as when I tell you the truth. <laughs> it won't. But, but see, the basic thing is, is when you were this little and you were able to, when you started getting into trouble, mm -hmm. and you lied to your mom about something, what happened when she caught you lying? <laughs> you got a beaten. Okay, you got in trouble, right? Mm -hmm. So as you got older, it got worse and worse, right? Yep. Yeah. Because lying is what? Bad. Right? And you've been taught that since you were very little. Mm -hmm. So it's instinctive to you. So what happens is, is your first pet was a uh, cat. 
okay? And when I asked you that, you kind of looked up, and then you had a picture of what that cat looked like. Mm -hmm. A vivid picture, just like you watched it on TV, right? Yeah. And that's how our brain works. It's like a big DVR. It stores all our memories. So when we ask a particular question, it'll go over, select that memory, and project it like on our forehead, and you'll see it, okay? Um, so when I asked you that, boom, you saw the picture, cat. Mm -hmm. That was the first answer. Now, if you wanted to lie to me and say it was a dog, you would have had to process that. So your first initial thing was going to say cat. Mm -hmm. So if you then you're like, well, I want to say it's a dog dog. So now you're engaged in another part of your brain. Mm -hmm. And there'll be a slight delay. Not only a slight delay, but that causes your automatic system kick in because you know you're about to lie. Mm -hmm. And what happened when you used to lie? You, know, you used to get in trouble. Mm -hmm. So when you do that, your autonomic system will kick in. Okay. Whether you realize it or not, it's going to do that. Because your program, from when you're this big, that lion's back. And you never wanted to get caught lying, did you? Nope. There you go. So that's why it works. Okay. So you see how quick you were with cat? Mm -hmm. So it's going to be the same thing here. You're going to look at it, and because I'm going to put it on the wall so you can see it. Mm -hmm. So as I'm asking you questions, I want you to just go right down the list. And you're going to see that. Mm -hmm. And so your first response is going to be yes. But you're going to have to decide to say no. <laughs> and... That's going to cause a problem mm -hmm. with your physiological changes. It, it, it'll show up. All right, makes sense. Yeah, makes sense. All right. So, uh, any questions or concerns so far? Need to use a restroom or anything? No, I'm just feeling a little tired. That's the only problem right now. All right. Well, we'll normally when I'm supposed to be sleeping. So, well, we'll get you to do this. Do you have a cell phone on you? No, I do not. Okay, I'll put it in the car. I think it would probably not be a good thing to bring in here. Excellent. Yeah, I turned mine off. So I, I don't, just didn't want anything to be a distraction for you. You didn't want it to vibrate your pocket yep. and cause a reaction. <laughs> 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 yeah, my book's vibrating. <laughs> All right, go ahead and for me and um, move the chair. Okay. All right, have a seat. Okay. All right, what I need you to do is Put your hands together like you're praying and uh, lift them up and lean forward and lean back. And this is going to go in your upper abdomen here. What I need you to do is exhale. All right. Now, the next one's going to go in your upper chest. And exhale again. Right now, put your arms down, and then you should go a little, relax a little bit. Mm -hmm. Lift arm up. Okay. Is it easy with this rolled up or no? Uh, man, nah, it's not going to be a problem. Okay. That's cool. Better like that. Mm -hmm. I see the space in between you know, mm -hmm. the custom skill. Okay. All right, your index finger. said before, the instructions are very simple. Feet flat on the floor, sit straight up just like you're sitting. Relax. Now I'm going to put, I'm going to put this on the wall before we start. But what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, the test is about to begin. Please remain completely still and answer each question with a simple yes or no. All right? When I say that, no more moving until I tell you, okay, you now can relax. And I'll take the pressure off the cuff. Okay. All right? What I'll do first is I'm going to calibrate the your breathing and your electrochromal activity, your fingers. And lastly, I'll do the cardio because I don't want that on there for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. All pumped up.
one second. Got to put your information there so it starts a file for you. Mm -hmm. I wish I had some caffeine. I'm getting a little, you know, naughty here. Uh, it's okay. I'm about to get started, so I'll, I'll, I'll start uh, stimulating you a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. All of that looks good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some pressure in your cuff. Okay. And I'm going to put it to a certain pressure, and then I'm going to ask you here in a second. Mm -hmm. Right now, what I need you to do is make a fist with your left hand, squeeze your whole arm. Okay, now relax and do it one more time. And relax, all the way, relax. And I'm going to take the pressure off a little bit. And what that did was it takes the extra air pockets out of the cuff so I get a nice clean tracing. Nice. Number test here? Yes. All right, perfect. All right, the test is about to begin. Please remain completely still and answer each question with a simple yes or no. Regarding the number you circled on that piece of paper, did you circle number 92? No. Did you circle number 94? No. Did you circle number 95? No. Did you circle number 96? No. Did you circle number 97? No. Did 
Did you circle number 98? No. Did you deliberately lie to any of the questions on this test? No. No, I was just supposed to say yes to that one. Don't worry about it. Alright, the test is almost complete. Please remain completely still while I take the instrument out of operation. Tracing, but since I 
pulled your shirt up mm -hmm. and got skin, bare skin, I can uh, back it up a little bit. So you just let me know when your hand feels good enough and we'll get started. Okay. You're good to go? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. No, I'm sorry. I uh, that when you said good enough thing meant like as you were flying. Alright, squeeze a couple of times for me like we practice. Perfect, really. And do it one time. And relax. You're ready to go. Mm -hmm. All right, the test is about to begin. Please remain completely still and answer each question with a simple yes or no. Do you know if Sasha was poisoned? No. with the 22? No. What's that? No. Was choked? No. Was shot with a thirty eight? No. Was hit with a hammer? No. Was hit with a chair? No. Almost complete. Please remain completely still. I take the instrument out of operation.
activados. Well, we don't know if there was any of them. I know, but I'm asking specifically if you know. I know, I know. This animal's from the security guard for the filter. Supposed to kill them. Keep that place secure, make sure things don't happen. Well, you know what? You can't be everywhere at once. Let's see and look at it. We're being very specific here. All right, I'm sorry. It's okay. I get it, but it's very important for you to focus on the task at hand, okay? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I'm asking you very specifically if you know something. Mm -hmm. No, I don't. And so, as I'm asking you, mm -hmm. yeah, don't, don't think, just answer. Yep. And answer honestly. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yes, sir. That's, that's the important thing. Yeah. Sorry, it's just, sorry, I have to go this one off. All right, well, let me know when you're ready to go. We'll, we're going to do this again. All right? Let me tell you right. All right, squeeze a couple times for me. Relax. One more time. And relax. All right, you ready to get started? Yes, sir. All right. All right, the test is about to begin. Please remain completely still and answer each question with a simple yes or no. Do you know if Sasha was poisoned? No. Shot with a twenty two. No. Was she stabbed? No. Shot with a thirty eight? No. Was 
Was she hit with a hammer? No. Was she here with a chair? No. Test is almost complete. Please remain completely slow. I take the instrument out of operation. Oh, okay, sorry. Um, 
Well, uh, what, what the, incident comes to mind? The uncle that raped me when I was nine years old. Okay, so you didn't tell me about that. No, but so I didn't ask, but yeah. Yeah, yeah no. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, not something I'm proud of, but yeah. Not someone I'd really just sleep over or something bad happened to them. Uh, let's see here. Sorry, I didn't realize that would be. No, no, and I'm not trying to get your your mm -hmm. personal past. No, I, I understand. It's, it, it's something I've come to terms with. And it's just <sighs> he lives here in Florida somewhere. And hopefully, I never run into him. All right. So if I was to ask you before last summer, have you ever lost control of your behavior because of your temper? No. a few questions. Um, they're called technical questions. Mm -hmm. Is your first name Steven? Yes. Do you work at Vital Security? <clears throat> yes. Do you now live in Port Orange? Yes. Were you born in New Hampshire? Yes. Okay. So any questions or concerns about any of those? No. No. Okay. Um, her being in between isn't going to cause an issue with the thing is it? I hope I don't know why I'm really gassy right now. <laughs> Just try to control it and breathe and all. Like I said, these tests last about five minutes again. We'll get you in there. Just got to them out. <laughs> Ready to get started? Yes, sir. All right, the test is about to begin. Please remain completely still and answer each question with a simple yes or no. Is your first name Stephen? Yes. Work for vital security? Yes. Did you enter Sasha's apartment that night? No. Do you now live in Port Orange? Yes. Do you know who caused Sasha's death? No.
Before this year, did you ever threaten anyone with physical harm? No. Were you born in New Hampshire? Yes. Did you cause the death of Sasha? No. Did you remove any items from Sasha's apartment? No. Before last summer, have you ever lost control of your behavior because of your temper? No. All right, the test is almost complete. Please remain completely still. I take the instrument out of operation. charts in order to score it properly for you. Okay. All right? Yeah. Everything looking good, though? Yeah. Yeah. yeah Excellent. Looking great. Excellent. Uh, what time is it right now? It is 5.20. Uh, so, if the third thing goes well, well, I have two more of these to do. They're five minutes apiece. I'm just trying to figure out how much time I'm going to have to lay down between now and work. Do I have to drive back the yeah, office this way? I don't have to be to work till 11 tonight. So, I need my 9.30. I might be able to lay down for an hour. Or I might stick on the bus and say, yeah, I'm not going to be able to make it tonight. Well, let's worry about this. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, this is more important, right? Yeah, you're right, you're right. <laughs> Sorry. Like, my, the way my head goes, I just go like, Think of everything. I try to plan ahead for everything. Yeah, I've been for two hours already. Almost two hours. 
Yeah. It takes a little while. You know, I did your yeah. background. Yep. Yep. You know, talk for a little bit. Mm -hmm. The test is actually doesn't take very long. Yeah, it's just everything else leading up to it. <laughs> yeah, I just got to get a better, you know, generalized idea about who you are, the mm -hmm. kind of person you are, and then yeah. a little bit about the knowledge of the case, and mm -hmm. then boom. Mm -hmm. Just let me know when you're ready. You're good? Yeah, good. All right. I'm going to give you a couple of squeezes. Relax. One more time. And relax. All right, you ready to go? Mm-hmm. Test is about to begin. Please remain completely still and answer each question with a simple yes or no. Is your first name Stephen? Yes. Do you work for Vital Security? Yes. Did you enter Sasha's apartment that night? No. Do you now live in Port Orange? Yes. Do you know who caused Sasha's death? No. Before this year, did you ever threaten anyone with physical harm? No. Were you born in New Hampshire? Yes. Did you cause the death of Sasha? No. Did you remove any items from Sasha's apartment? No.
before last summer, have you ever lost control of your behavior because of your temper? No. Was complete. Please remain completely still. I take the instrument out of operation. Take my wife to work. Night class. It's gonna be a long night tonight at work. I just know. Luckily, it's Thursday. Thursday is usually pretty quiet because it wants to work Friday. All right. If this one all goes to plan. I think this is the last one we need to do. Awesome. Uh, good to go. Yeah. You just let me know when you're ready. Yeah, I'll let you know. Yep. Trying to get my hand to do this. Yep, yeah, take your time. <laughs> this, this, is, this is your test. My hand's not mine. So. <laughs> you take your time. You let me know. Yeah, it's a bitch. No, I know I don't want to get my blood pressure taken. <laughs> It's a little different, but yeah, but you know, it's still, that you you actually don't do it as tightly as they would start. And my hand would just be like literally like just throbbing. Yeah, like, that's why I have fingertips. That's why I back off as yeah. much as I can. I yeah. still get a good tracing. So yeah, yeah, as a nurse, it's actually automatic too. There's will actually automatically mm -hmm. back off up to the last point, but even that's still like a feel in my fingertips. Yeah. <sighs> All right, let's get this going. All right. All right, squeeze go past one. And relax. One more time. And relax. You ready to get started? Yes, sir. All right, the test is about to begin. Please remain completely still and answer each question with a simple yes or no. Is your first name Stephen? Yes. For vital security? Yes. Did you enter Sasha's apartment that night? No. Do you now live in Port Orange? Yes.
Do you know who caused Sasha's death? No. Before this year, did you ever threaten anyone with physical harm? No. Were you born in New Hampshire? Yes. Did you cause the death of Sasha? No. Did you remove any items from Sasha's apartment? No. Before last summer, have you ever lost control of your behavior because of your temper? No. complete because you may complete you still want to take the instrument out of operation. intelligent person here today. Mm -hmm. What I need you to do is multiply 7 times 31. I need you to hurry up about how much time. Okay. 218. Okay.
See, it wasn't all that bad. Was it? <laughs> Not at all. It's just when people don't have an understanding of it, you know, they get a little nervous about it. It's mm -hmm. not, you know, no. I've been in your chair hundreds of times. So not because it did anything. We, the examiners, we tested, tell you how to track this. Yeah, well, yeah. Perfect. Any other Nothing good, I think. There we go. Uh, I used to have under the chair back. Do you have any water? Do you go bathroom or anything? You've been here a little bit? No, no. I'll probably stay by the gas station or something on the way. I'm going to grab something. I'm feeling a bit hungry. Oh, I shouldn't have that long ago. You can stand up, relax, stretch, do whatever you got to do. Uh, So in your opinion, how was it? A little difficult just because trying to keep my mind still from doing what we normally do when I hear things, especially with what's been going on. Like when I knew we did the first one because all I could do was think about all those horrible things. But, yeah. I'll, I'm just saying as far as your opinion about polygraph. Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, actually, no. Wasn't what I thought it was going to be. No? No. Not that bad. No. Not at all. Kind of neat, actually. I mean, I was actually surprised by these things here. The um, ones that went around my chest and my abdomen. Mm -hmm. That's kind of neat. Because usually when you see it, like, you know, they've got, like, the sensors like they do for EKGs. I've never seen something like this. What are these? That's key. Yeah. <laughs> That's the power. It used to only be just one. Mm -hmm. But then they come to realize that people breathe from here and from here. Women and men are usually different. Mm -hmm. Men, we're slobs, we have poor posture. Yeah, so we're, <laughs> we're what we call belly breathers. Mm -hmm. So that's why the upper abdomen is. Women usually have a better posture. Mm -hmm. They sit up and they're chest breathers. Mm -hmm. So but now they've included both just in case because that's not excluding that men couldn't be chest breathers and women can't be belly breathers. Mm -hmm. So can't be sexist. <laughs> nope. When I first started, it used to have either just just that or just the blood pressure cuff. Mm -hmm. and then they started adding stuff to it, and now we have what we have today. Mm -hmm. I'm sure someday they can probably actually figure out a way to actually tell when someone's lying. The only problem is, you know, you know, the age-old question: What happens when someone honestly believes in their own lie? I mean, it's not that. Right? Mm -hmm. Damn, that's a lot of ways. That's pretty good. Cool. Eating it through, and this is even more of a pain in the butt. Uh, that, that's, but that's uh, thermal paper, right? It's it's tax paper. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> no, I hate how they uh, squat when I used to work in a uh, convenience store. I hated how they changed to thermal paper instead of the old way for uh, the um, fireball tickets. Because now you make a mistake, you're leaving your wallet too long, you're leaving the car on a hot day, it can actually ruin the paper. So. Crap, I can't read the numbers, or the barcode's gone. So you, know, like, so you get the winning ticket, well, you're too oh, bad. Yeah, we're going to get the money. That's ridiculous. Ah, tell me about it. It's all a scam anyway, just oh. wanting to make money. Yeah, you know, all the money's supposed to go to uh, like school. Mystery. Well, no, the, no, it does go to the school. It does go to the school. The thing is, then they ship the money that was already there for the school out so that it stays even. Makes sense. Yeah, well, no, yeah, but it's not good. It's not how it should be. No, oh, that lottery money should be for extra stuff. Oh,
Oh my god. Yeah, that thing was tight. It actually burst a few blood vessels in my hand. Burst them. Those little, those little red dots in the back of my hand. Those weren't there when I came here. Oh, up there. Hmm. Okay. Usually that happens when I retch too hard. I'll pull all the blood vessels out of my eyes right here. I look like I have two black eyes. Well, does it, are you susceptible to that? Does it happen routinely for, for all the retching? Yes, so that happens quite often. Uh, I've never actually noticed it ever happening like this before. So, I don't know. Could just be a fluke. These other two. Let's do all three. Yeah, but that captain, he tells one of my, like I said, he told one of the younger airmen, just dump them in the, uh, in the, in the pill box. Oh. I'm like, um, no, you're not. Well, Captain told me to. Give me that. And I call the captain. And I tell him, sir, I don't feel comfortable doing this because um, these are narcotics. And we don't know if they altered or did anything to the pills, and then you're going to dispense them to the... No, 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 no. Anything we take back like that, it just gets destroyed anyway. Right. We would never give it back to right. another patient. Uh, even if it's perfectly sealed, there's, if there's, if it's impossible, it could have possibly been tampered with, we still will destroy it. Because the moment it leaves our control, it is no good after that. But, um, no, basically, he took it back to destroy them. And we don't do that with narcotics. And he still did it. So the airman was going to do it, and I told him no. And the airman was actually ignoring me, and I outranked him. And I told him, you know, the second time, I'm like, okay, look. I'm asking you right now, where did you put those pills? Because he was hiding them from me because he was just going to do what the captain said and ignore me. And he's like, I'm not telling you. I'm like, okay, that was me asking. Now, as an E4 to an E2, I implore you to tell me where those pills are. <laughs> Before I call security forces. <laughs> and finally, you were lunching and I talked to the captain. And the captain's like, well, yeah, I know I shouldn't have done it, but you know, just destroy them one. All right, fine, but I am going to be filing. I'm going to be filing a form, and I'm going to be having you sign this as soon as you come into work, first thing in the morning, because I am covering my ass on this. And, sure. I, and, I, and I did a memorandum for record on it. I crushed the tablets and I mixed them with um, used coffee grounds. That's what it's supposed to do. And then I dumped it into the uh, pill container, into the pill box. That was supposed to. Just saying, kind of want to go uh, score, and I have to have another polygraph examiner review it, make sure I'm doing the best job I can for you. Sounds good. All right. All right. I'll be here. All right. You need anything this power. We'll do.
Yeah. What if it happens higher? Very stable. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. 
coming in, R3. Now compare this one, this one, this one. Well, you got you got not only got this, but you have this. Mm -hmm. So out of these three, which one jumps out at you? It's just the way the line is up there, and I guess. Yeah, it all, it's not going as far as this. It's mm -hmm. it's like from here mm -hmm. all the way up here. So you got one, two, three, four, five bars. Okay. Here, because I'm asking the question, so here's the line. So you got one, two. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this one, this one, which was bigger? Which one has more lines? This one. That's one line. Okay, so so we got R three, R five, mm -hmm. and this one and this one. Which one? And you can look at that. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this one and a little bit. One a little bit mm. between this and this. And this is a hot mess because that's when I asked you that multiple times. <laughs> yeah, but see how your 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 whole heart rate went up like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's kind of similar to to this and that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now you're you're picking out. So we're, we're both in agreement. Now you're helping me grade this, okay? Mm -hmm. So you got your zone R3, and, and this has been consistent on every chart, right? So we got R3, R5, R8, and R9 is questionable. I guess I mean, I don't really take attention to the R parts. But, well, well, these are the numbers that you've been picking on all the charts, okay? Mm -hmm. So now, read me the question, read the question to R3. Did you exercise the department that night? Read R5. Do you know who caused Slash the death? R7. I'm sorry, R8. Did you cause the death of Sasha? And R9. Did you remove any items in Sasha's apartment? Okay. Which so basically what you you told me, mm -hmm. okay, I let you look at the charts. Mm -hmm. I let you tell me what jumped out of the screen. Off the charts at you. Yeah. Correct? Yep. Yeah. So we are of the same opinion that the only thing that really seems to be bothering you on this test is these relevant questions that pertain to the situation that we're here dealing with. Mm -hmm. So, how is scored? All right. I'm just telling you all the technical stuff. Okay. Okay. So you got, we score the, the relevant questions. Okay, and that's how we score. We compare the relevance to these other questions. Okay. Because, and this is how it works. I don't know if you did any research on it. Anyway. Uh, okay. All right. That should have been one of your questions. That's <laughs> <laughs> okay. I thought about throwing that in there because you had advanced warning, but to me it's not a big deal. I would, yeah. uh, you know, I, I see some issues with the breathing. I mean, when I'm able to count, and it's constantly the same count, mm -hmm. It shows me that, you know, it's kind of questionable whether you, you were thinking about your breathing, but that's neither here nor there. Because mm -hmm. um, I only need two of the three tracing or four mm -hmm. to get a good score, score yep. the charts. Okay, so okay. Here, here's my score sheet. Mm -hmm. Relevant three, five, eight, and nine. Okay. okay. The P is for the breathing. These are the two, they're called pneumograph tubes. Okay. So it starts with a P. Mm -hmm. So you have the top one, bottom one. We look at the R3 compared to R6 mm -hmm. and the four. You know, we compare them and we look for any differences. Mm -hmm. Here, for the most part, on all charts, I didn't really see anything different on any of the breathing. So your breathing didn't change at all during the charts. Okay. E is for the electrodermal activity, which is this middle line here. Okay. Yep. So what I do is I compare this. So I count, see these little squares or yeah. rectangles? I count how far it goes up mm -hmm. compared to the control questions. Okay. And I compare those and it either gets a plus or a minus. Mm -hmm. In this case, when, when when a person has more issues with the with the relevant question than they do the control question, mm -hmm. then, you know, because we all know in 
we've all had these issues where, you know, there, there's been a time in your life where, where we, we've had um, physical contacts or physical issues with people, okay? And we have, we've been in fights. We've, we've done all that stuff. And, and it's kind of, we know that, but when we ask the question, you know, that's supposed to bother you more because you know you're kind of lying about that because you're remembering a, a, an incident compared to you shouldn't have any problem with the, the issue at hand if there was nothing involved there. Okay. So technically, the control questions should look like this, mm -hmm. and the right. relevance should look like the controls. Okay. So, so is this is not good? This is not good. Okay. All I need is a minus three in any one of these spots. Mm -hmm. You got a minus three in all of them except for a minus four and a zero and one. For this to be a negative test. Okay. Okay. Now, what does that mean? That means you have some memory and some issues with these relevant questions. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, you know, the issue is, my thing is, is after talking to you, I, I don't think you're a bad guy. You're a really smart guy. You're, you're, you seem to be a good guy. You've had some things happen in your life that's, that's screwed up. Yep. And, you know, and you had to deal with a lot more than most people had to do. And, and I get that. Um, but there comes a time where sometimes things happen and people freak out. Okay? And they make a mistake and then they panic. And, you know, it, it comes to what would look better, you know, because right now there's, you know, the detectives, they have, you know, stuff they're looking at and they're getting reports back with, you know, all the forensic stuff they're doing. And I know you've been cooperating, and that's that's a huge, huge factor for you. Mm -hmm. Okay? That is huge. But the thing is, when it comes to this, okay, mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously, my report's going to say that you didn't do too good on this test. Yeah. All right? And I have to explain that. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, you know, I'm here to listen to you if, you know, if you want to talk and explain to me why you might have some issues on these questions, okay? Because if something happened, it was an accident, and then you panicked because maybe, uh, you, uh, from what I understand, mm -hmm. she was being very flirtatious to other people, and that's what got her there to the to the apartment because those two girls grabbed her before she got in the car with some guys. And I don't know about that. No, I know you don't know. That happened before she got to the uptown. Okay. okay. That's, these girls didn't even know her. And that's why they told you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We don't even know her. her. But what happened is they, they snatched her up and they got her at, away from those guys because she was being very, very flirtatious. Okay. Okay. And so, you know, based on this, there, there's something going on here. Okay. And so maybe she... Somehow talked you into coming in. Um, well, the chart saying that you did this is huge, mm -hmm. and this is did you enter her apartment? No, I didn't. All right. Well, I mean, you know, I'm honest, the the situation is bothering me. I mean, with, about the whole thing about her. I mean, I'll, I'll be straight up. And this whole situation has been bothering me. And just thinking about what may have happened is just. And and I understand that. But that's why I was very clear about clearing that up before we took the I test. I know. All right? Because that was very important. Yep. Because that's why I kind of did the first test first to get, to get that out of the way, explain to you and clear those issues up. Mm -hmm. All right? So that's very important. And because I wanted you to, to take the best test possible. Mm -hmm. Okay? That was my goal. Yep. And I think I succeeded in that. Yeah, I mean, and, I was trying not to think of anything, just answer and, the questions, but... And you yourself was able to pick out mm -hmm. every spot that looked like a reaction. Yep. I didn't even have to point them out to you. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm good at, I'm good at um, analyzing patterns. Okay. Well, without even being a polygraph examiner, you were able to show me each question you had an issue with. Mm -hmm. And all, every single one of them on every single chart was the relevant questions. So that means there's something there. There's something that you're not telling the complete truth about. Something's bothering you about this situation, and you're not being 100% honest with me about it. That's what I can tell you, and that's all I can tell the detectives, that there is something there that you're not being 100% honest about. 
Now, if she invited you in to have a few drinks or something like that, or whatever it was, you need to be honest about it because this is saying you know something and that something happened. This is what this is telling me. And you yourself agreed that these were the you know, yeah, situations. Yeah, that yeah, point, yeah, something that points out. But I mean, and like I said, sometimes things happen. If she was over flirtatious and something happened and you panicked, we can understand that. But if you can feel that and, you know, all the evidence comes in, and you had your opportunity today to talk about it, it's not going to look good because if there was an accident, that's one thing that we can explain away. But if you don't talk about it and it comes back, it makes it look like you're, what, a monster. Okay? And I don't think you're that kind of person. Okay? The same stuff happened to you when you were little. You told me about that. Yeah. And recently with the whole getting stabbed thing. Right. So you told me about that. Okay? So you understand what it's like. And so with that being said, you got to understand that we need to explain this stuff away. It's very important for you. Okay? You were the last person to see her. Okay? And based on your own opinions on this chart that you pointed out to me, okay, obviously something was there's wrong. something's bothering you. We need, to, we need to get this behind you is what it is because, like I said, you know, th this can go either way. You can either look like a horrible monster mm -hmm. or something, an accident happened and you panicked. And we can explain that kind of stuff. But if you don't talk about it, it's not going to look good. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what to talk about. I mean, nothing happened. I mean, I never went into her apartment. So, I mean, I don't know why I did react the way it did. Because your autonomic system that you can't control mm -hmm. kicked in. You have no control over that. That's why this works so well. Mm -hmm. Now, let me show you another thing. One more thing. I'll show you... You're in DNA evidence, right? Yep. Okay, so you know when it comes in, it says, you know, one in whatever billion, million people. Okay. Now, what I do is, mm -hmm. I won't trust computers. Yep. I hand score myself. Mm -hmm. Okay? So now I'm going to let this do it. Mm -hmm. There. What's that say? Significant reactions. Uh, probably this is what was produced by a triple person. 0.003% chance that the result was produced by a truthful person. Damn. 0.003% chance mm -hmm. that you were truthful on this stuff today. And that, what it does is it scores all three charts, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. And it does all its little algorithm stuff. You, you're into that kind of stuff, so. Yeah. See all these minus threes? Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's basically almost, almost identical to my scoring. So, not only did I have another polygraph examiner look at this, because what I did was I scored it, and he scored it, and then we compared the scores, and they were identical. And now you have this also. So, how do we get past that? That's the issue. I don't know. I, I, I can only help you so much. Okay, no, I understand. I mean, you've been... Very helpful explaining these things to me as it is. I mean, it, it is what it is. It's, yeah. you know, th these are, this is the report that detectives are going to get. Mm -hmm. So, what I'll do is I'll explain to the You come in? Hey, Dr. David, how you doing? Pretty good. Thanks. I was just showing you, this is the computer scoring the charts. Yeah. Zero, zero, three percent chance that the results were produced by a truthful person. So that's basically a 99.7% chance that he's being deceitful. Okay. So, okay. Now, I'll let you guys know. Are you okay, Steve? Well, uh, not anymore. I don't know what this thing is going on.
I've been doing this for a while. And I really don't think you're a you're a black person. I really don't. But sometimes good people do bad things. Does not make you a bad person? Sometimes you just overreact. Or sometimes you could be enticed into doing something. One thing we're asking from you, Steve, is just, just the truth. It's just the truth. Okay? That's difficult for a lot of people. But you've been in the military. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of life experience. Mm -hmm. And I understand some bad things have happened, have happened to you in life. Yep. And lying is never going to make it better. Because I can see it in your eyes, baby. I can see it in your eyes. Something has been, it's been laying heavy on your heart ever since you found out. It's been laying heavy on your heart. Have you thought about anything else? Just that something bad's happened on my watch. Something bad has happened. And we need to talk about it. We need to talk about it, see. There's certain things obviously that we already know. Mm -hmm. We know you were actually you guys were on how many floors were you guys on? First floor, third floor. Is that it? That's what I can remember. You don't remember being on the fourth floor? Oh, no, not really, no. No? Are you sure? Mm -hmm. What's something you don't want to remember? I don't remember being on the fourth floor. Listen to you. I, I will tell you this. I'm not saying Sasha was a, was a bad person. She was very flirtatious. Very. We were tracking her from downtown when she's trying to pick up guys. Mm -hmm. So, we you know. She wasn't flirting with me, I mean, other than, you know, leaning against me in the hallway because she could barely stand. But she wasn't flirting with me. She never flirted with you? No. She never asked you to come inside the apartment? If she had asked me to come to the apartment, I would have told her no. But this is the problem. According to what I'm looking at. I don't know. But I've been asked by other residents in the past, too, to come into their apartments. And I've also told them no. I had one offer me sexual favors, and I declined. The only person who knows that that other than me is my supervisor. Because we didn't want to embarrass the resident because he was drunk at the time. Or possibly just lonely and maybe tipsy, I don't know. I take my job seriously, and when my job says I'm not allowed to go into someone's apartment, I don't go into someone's apartment. The only time I would ever go into someone's apartment is with a detective like yourself, or a police officer, or an EMT, or something, someone that I have to go in with because, you know, doing something within my duties. Whereas, so how do we explain this? I don't know. I am bothered by the situation, I will tell you that, because Something has happened to someone in the building that I'm responsible for that I'm supposed to keep everyone safe. Yes, I've been bothered by this since the moment I saw it and heard about the situation. It's been bothering me. I've been having a hard time sleeping because of this. I've been terrified of what's going to happen when I go to work tonight because I know I'm going to be having residents asking me questions. I might even have newspaper people trying to corner me. Now, this whole thing is bothering me. And I knew this was going to end up happening because... This is not the first time I've had police officers assume I did the worst thing. Okay. When was the other time? A juvenile record. Oh, okay. yeah. A juvenile thing that I pled guilty despite the fact that I was innocent because I didn't want to destroy a friend of mine's family. A couple of things. Yes. You know, um, just as the detective said, mm -hmm. Good, bad things happen to good people sometimes, right? Yeah, I know that for a fact. Well, you well. know, I can relate to what you're going through. You know what? I sat in that chair for about 20 years, hooked up to that machine, because I was accused of something very serious. Okay? Mm -hmm. And it's no joke. And it scared the shit out of me, because when you're accused of something, it scares you. Yeah. 
and it was on my mind. And I was nervous. My heart was beating real fast. But you know what? I passed. Okay? So I'm a big, huge believer in this machine. Alright, so <clears throat> we have to explain away. You can say that it's been going through your mind. You can say all those things. I understand that. Alright? Because I couldn't sleep either because I was accused of something very serious. And I still passed. Because I know I didn't do what I was accused of. Okay. Second thing is this. <clears throat> I know you take your job seriously. I, I believe you. I can see the way you carry yourself, the way you are there, you know, a little bit that we saw you do you take your job seriously. We look, look at your reports. You're very serious. Methodical, what you think? Yeah. Meticulous. Yes. Don't miss anything. Try not to. For the most part, you would say you don't, right? Yeah. You document things. Don't miss anything. Again, like I said, try not to, but everyone's human. Right. But for the most part, when you see a violation or something happens, you, you notate on your records, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, with that being said, we have an issue. Yeah. Okay. What garbage did you take out that day? Some trash at uh, my way out after I turned in my report. Where did you find it? Uh, it was on the second floor. On the second floor? Yeah. What was on what apartment? I, uh, I don't remember. You don't remember? No. That's happened to you before? Well, not remembering? Or no, find trash. Yeah, usually I find it when, during my shift. And what do you document. do with it? Usually I just document it. Mm -hmm. When was the last time you took trash out? Mm -hmm. Usually Tom, because when it's on my shift, I just deal with it. Where was your car parked? On the second floor. Okay. And you said you were on your way out? Yes. But you came back in? Yeah, because I had to get my stuff, and then I went back out and left. So you weren't really on your way out? I was on my way to get my stuff. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, yes okay. I know what you're saying. So, <clears throat> we have an issue. Mm -hmm. You didn't report that, did you? No, it was already after my ship was over. But it's still a violation, right? Mm -hmm. Somebody, somebody violated it. Yeah. And you never mentioned it? No, it was off my ship. I understand that. I'm not saying it wasn't, but still, you say you, you document things, you don't miss things, right? Yeah, once on my ship. Okay. Right. So, do you understand how that's starting to look? Yeah, it doesn't look good. Right. Okay. So you take that with we know you're on the fourth floor with her. Right? Where did you first hear it when she went inside? She was we went we went to her saw. Well, I mean your statement to us before was you, you went inside to go look for her, correct? Right? Okay, where was the first place that you saw her when you found her? Maybe the second or third floor. Maybe the floor. Honestly, which your first statement, your written statement says you found her by her, by her apartment. Mm -hmm. That's your statement says. Yes, I am. So why does your statement say that? You're confusing me. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to understand. Well, understand. No, no, no. Understand. I'm I'm just exhausted. I know you're I'm tired. nervous as hell right now because now you guys are basically accusing me of doing something. No, sir. We're just trying to understand why we're getting the reaction we're getting, okay? Mm -hmm. That's it. Because we have to explain that. Mm -hmm. And and we have an obligation to the family mm -hmm. and to, to our superiors mm -hmm. to be able to explain that. Because we say, well, we couldn't explain it. <laughs> you understand. Things. you got to do your job. Yeah, it's just okay. when the whole bad things happen to people, people panic, stuff. I know, what, I know what that, how that sounds and I know what that leads to. What does that lead to? It leads to, next thing I know, I'm a suspect, you guys think I did something bad. We're just trying to understand why. I'm bothered by these questions. Yeah. And we're understanding, you know, we're, again, we're looking at um, your statement, your first written statement. Yeah. And I've seen you write reports. You write very detailed reports. Mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah in this I'm report... On the spot, having to pick everything right from out of my head. I'm not oh, very no. good on the spot. It's mostly on the spot when they talk to you and you wrote a statement. It's just you were you know, well, you say. well, everything's going on. I don't know what's going on. I'm confused. I'm trying to remember everything that I can about the situation. Mm -hmm. Basically, to me, that's somewhat on the spot. Okay. Speaking. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Something happened that night. Something happened that night that, that we can't, we can't deny. We cannot deny that. I'm looking at 
in this year? Yep. Okay. And where you got that here? That would be, um, that's the uh, stairwell, that, uh, stairwell C, the exit is up on the passive Okay. Why are you not in the stairwell? Because I was walking around with her. Okay. So you were walking around with her? Yeah. Okay. See, you didn't tell us that. Yeah, honestly, I did. I slipped my mind. We asked you. You said she came. She did not have the box, so she could not get in. Yeah. Or, um, she got in. allow her to go in. And you tell us, then you start doing your rounds, mm -hmm. and you encounter her on the third floor. Mm -hmm. That's on the first floor. This is on the, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So you, you see the problem that we yeah. have? No, I, yeah, I can understand what the issue is here. Okay. You, you're going to have to let it go. You're going to have to tell the truth. I am telling you the truth. This will bother you. This will eat at you. It will eat at you the rest of your life. That I can guarantee. What we can deal with the truth. What will eat at me for the rest of my life? That you're not being truthful. I'm being truthful. You can say that, but there are just so many discrepancies in your statement. Things that even day one didn't didn't make a, a lot of sense to us. Mm -hmm. Don't yeah, you think yeah, you should have allowed her to? Right. Okay. Shouldn't you have made sure that she was inside of her apartment? Yeah, I shouldn't okay. have. We see you guys coming from the parking garage, which you did tell the truth about, because yeah. you guys didn't quite make it. Mm -hmm. And something happened, and you guys come right back in. I think you said that she said she was under the code. Yeah. Oh. And you guys go right to her door and she's punching in that code. Is that accurate? Because that, that's audio. Mm -hmm. Cause I'm partially aware you have audio yeah. along with you. Actually, I didn't know that. You, okay. no, I actually oh, you did? Like, no, I didn't know that the uh, things were <clears throat> actually did audio until the property manager had actually showed um, myself and my supervisor. When was that? Uh, that was actually the night that uh, you guys were all there. The okay. night I my uh, verbal statement. Right. So, so there's audio. Mm -hmm. So I can hear the things that you guys are saying. Yeah. And we we know she's putting in her code. Mm -hmm. What happens after that? It still wasn't working. You, what did you do? I went and walked around. I told you. And just left her there. Mm -hmm. Not knowing if she really resided there? No. And like I said, I, when I came back, if she had still been there, I would have dealt with the situation, either told her she had to leave, or I would have called you guys and had you guys remove her until something could be done about it. I'm going to give you the opportunity to walk around. We're trying to understand this. Okay, so we're trying to understand. I was giving her the benefit of the doubt, and because honestly, but that's not your job, is it? No, it's not. And so, you know, it's not my job, and I was I was reprimanded for doing that already by my supervisor, actually by my boss. And yeah, what I should have done was stay with her, make sure she got into her apartment, and then left. But I have to babysit drunk kids in that complex all the time. I have other things I need to check to make sure that people are not breaking into apartments. I've had people try to get into the property before it did not belong. They were trying to sneak in. So around... Yes, yes, but we can agree that you can't be every place at that time, can you? Yeah, exactly. Right. You can only be in one place at a time, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so let's agree that if you have people sneak into a door downstairs, you would have to deal with that, correct? Correct. Right. And if that, while that's going on, something else happens up on the third floor for the parking deck, it's, I'm, I'm sorry, Let's make it different for it. Say fourth floor and fifth floor. Mm -hmm. Okay. Something happens where somebody breaks the door, does something, right? But you're downstairs and you're dealing with a legitimate issue. Mm -hmm. Are you going to get in trouble for that? No. No. We can agree on that, correct? Yes. Okay. Then why did would I you, would you, but I said, would you call this a pressing issue? I mean, yeah. well, the, reason I, why, uh, the reason why I did what I did was because I've had cases before where I've had drunken people get locked out of their apartments. 
usually, yeah, I'll leave them there, let them try to figure out what they're trying to do. I'll go do a walk around. Hopefully, by the time I get back, they've figured out the situation. Yeah. It has happened in the past. Usually, you find those people right at their apartment. Yeah. Okay. Why did you go specifically after she walked in the door? Did you go floor by floor by floor and find her? Because I wanted to make sure she was okay. She was obviously drunk and intoxicated, and I had to verify whether or not she was actually. So then the question comes back to why would you leave her if she's so drunk and so intoxicated? Because Where is she I left her at the door, and I pretty much figured she wasn't going to move from that spot. She was going to stay there and keep plugging away at that stupid key. But do you there. understand that? Yeah. No, I understand what you're saying, and yeah, I agree. That was a stupid thing for me to do, was to leave her alone. You saw a video where you were chasing her at one point. That's because she thought she'd be funny and starts running off. Well, that's my question. If it's not that big of a deal... I've had this happen before. Again, this is not something that's completely out of the norm for me to deal with drunken people doing stupid shit. Right, but I, I still come back to... I, what I'm trying to understand, and I keep coming back to it, is you went floor by floor by floor looking for her. She's running. You're, you're going to try to find her. Mm -hmm. and, and, and basically, this is a problem. It's taking up your time. Yeah. And I understand you're saying, I was, well, you know, I don't want to have to, I don't want to have to call you guys for just to, to, to take someone around. No, no, and I understand that, but after three or four or five times she puts the code in, I you know, you know, know. she could have been stalking her ex-boyfriend for all you know. Yeah, I know. Oh. And, and you, yeah, you, didn't, you didn't call. Yeah. Did you have a cell phone again? Yeah, I had my cell phone. And you didn't call. Yeah. Did she ask to use the phone? Did you offer to call your friends for her? No. So how was she? She never asked me to use my phone. Did you, did you offer to say, hey, can we call your friends for you? No, I never offered. So, that that becomes an issue. Mm -hmm. And then, and then you know, you walk back by, right? And she's not there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I should have knocked on the door to check to make sure she was okay. Why didn't you? Because I'm not, you know, I don't make it in a habit to knock on someone's door unless there's a problem. Plus, oh, what makes it to this problem? Yes and no. If she got into the apartment, then at that point, but I, but I'm not responsible for them once they've reached their apartment. So it's their private condos owned by individuals, not by the building. But we can agree that you didn't know that was her apartment. Yes, I can agree. Yeah, we can agree that. So it could have been a problem that she was inside. Yeah, it could have been. But, but you did not. Yeah, I should have been. Steven, you know, I have an issue with something else, too. I'm going to tell you. I, you know, I look at human behavior and human nature, okay? Okay. And I have an issue with something. Mm -hmm. Um, we've been doing this for a long time, and everybody that we've spoken to about this case has asked us several questions. What happened? How? When? You've never asked any of it. I don't understand. I don't want to know. Why not? Because I don't want to find out if something happened on my shift that I could have prevented had I been around and then that's going to eat away for the rest of my life. What else could it be? What do you think? You, 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 you're kind of on our side of it. I mean, what would that indicate to you? Possibly. Someone who doesn't care. Someone who knows. What do you think I know? I just, I'm just saying. We have to be, you know, yeah, no, I understand that you guys have a job. Well, it's just something we look at. Mm -hmm. So now you look at, you've got these garbage bags that you didn't report to anybody. You're taking them out to the second floor. Dumpster. Um, where you're, well, the dumpster's there, but your car's there, too. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's things missing. Right? Watch out. We looked at certain things. Things match up. And... You know, we're, we're, there's holes in, in, in your statements. Mm -hmm. Every time we talk to you, there's more and more and more that comes out. And that just gives us a lot of pause. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, <clears throat> you know, the, the, the thing is, you know, when I even talk with general, you know, sometimes, you know, there's, there's things that go out of our control. And, and it's something that, it happens like that. But the thing is, people don't have intense, you know, like a car accident. You look down for one second at your cell phone, and the next thing you know, you're in a fatal accident. And the person on the other side is, 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 is gone. That's an accident. 
sometimes you, know, you still have to answer for that, you still have to deal with it, but it's a lot better than if you drank six beers and got in the car and drove. I mean, that's a purposeful act, wouldn't you agree? Uh -huh. Or at least a really stupid decision. Well, but, well yeah, you know what I'm saying, saying it's, it's purposeful. Somebody said, I'm going to do something I know I'm going to do, and they go in and, you know, I'm going to drink these beers, I'm going to drive and fuck everybody else, and that's what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And they kill somebody. That's, that's a hell of a lot different than, than somebody, oh, I looked down for three seconds on my cell phone. Oh my God, I can't believe it. I'm so, so sorry. How do you think, how do you think a jury's going to look at a person like that versus a person who purposely drank and drove? And drove? How do you think a jury's going to look at that? How do you think society's going to handle somebody that says, you know, I, 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 I swear to God, it was an accident. I didn't mean it. Versus somebody who, who purposely does something to, to, to hurt somebody or cause a problem with society. How do you think they're going to look at, look at, we've got A over here and B over here. How do you think society's going to look at those people? They're going to look better on A than B. Right. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Sometimes things happen. And you know what? Everything that we're looking at, there's problems with every little bit of what we're looking at. Okay? I don't think you're a monster. I don't think you're a bad guy at all. I think you're an honorable man. The temptation sometimes. And holy shit. She was a pretty girl. Wasn't she? My wife's mother. Sorry. Well, that's okay. You know what? Hey, look at some of these superstars. Yeah. They got the hot slides going. Mm -hmm. And what do they do? Yeah. They'll go find some, some $100 whore and they'll, they'll screw around with them because it's different. Yeah. We're guys. There's We're temptation. Right There's temptation everywhere. Yeah. You can't tell me that, you know, your wife could be the hottest in the world. I'm not saying she's not. Mm -hmm. But, no, I've, I've looked. No, she's sure. looked. She's looked. Sure, right. man. And you said the one that offered the sexual, the, the sexual favors was a dude. Yeah. Okay, so that's a little different. Okay, so let's talk about, let's talk about a girl, a pretty girl. Nine times out of ten, you're going to say no because it's your job. Mm -hmm. It's it's who you are. Every man stumbles and every man falls sometimes. And it causes us to do things. Now, if that's the case, and it happens, it's not going to go away. Understand that. It's not. But remember, society is going to look at you one way or another. Mm -hmm. Did you want her? Did you want mm -hmm. Did you want her? her? Want, she's oh, one of the residents that I'm responsible for. Oh, well, listen to my question. No, listen. Did you want her? her? Because there's predators out there that are going to go and do things on purpose. And then there's people that are going to fall into a temptation situation and shit's going to happen. And the next thing you know, but again, that's just like the person who texted versus the person who drank six beers. This is the time. This is your time. Okay? If this button is still out there, I know, I know things were done, but that doesn't mean it's going to be perfect. That's a big gamble you're taking. You want to sit and wait, and if it comes back, we're going to say, we're going to say yep, here it is. We got the physical buttons now. And he didn't tell us anything. Because that makes it look like you're that guy. This guy. Purposeful. I'm going to take what I want and I'm going to do what I want. Versus this guy. Okay? I'm not trying to get you to say anything that didn't happen. I'm just telling you the way it works. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? You didn't want to hurt her. I didn't hurt her. Can we at least agree that you did go inside? Now you may not have heard her. I did not come inside of her apartment. There's a lot of physical evidence. Even after she invited you in? She didn't invite me into her apartment. So you, you know there's audio. There, there's audio. Mm -hmm. We can hear you too. Mm -hmm. She didn't invite me into her apartment. And if we're going to continue on this line of discussion, I think we're done here for now. And I'm going to go home, I'm going to take a nap, and I'm going to go to work. If you guys want to talk to me again some other time, we'll have a lawyer involved. Because at this point, I don't feel comfortable talking with you detectives. Because it's making it, because it sound, sounds to me like you're trying to make me say something, like I did something and I did oh, not. We don't want, we want the truth is all we want. Well, you have the truth. I'm sorry that some of my stuff has been kind of spotty. I'm sorry I may have forgotten some key details or even minor details that look really bad when they're not told. But I have told you everything. I've been more than cooperative. 
I mean, I, 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 I even told you yesterday that I wasn't familiar, and I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not kind of nervous about these things. I still came in today. You did. Now, that, now I'm looking at this, now I'm seeing this was a mistake to come in for this, because now it just makes it look like I did something, because obviously I'm bothered by the situation. There was a dead person that I saw in the building I'm responsible for the security of. Well, one thing I came to, Stephen, is change the results. I know, no. I, I, you, you do understand that. No, I understand that. No, I understand, understand that. you've already said that you're, you're done for the day. Yeah, I, I do understand that. And I, and I respect that. But you have to know, huh? this, isn't, this isn't going away. Okay. I know. I understand. Uh, you I'm understand. looking at it now. Mm -hmm. And to be honest with you, I wish it was the other way around. Yeah, me too. Yeah, because I was really this probability good for me. That the result was produced by a truthful person. Mm -hmm. I wish it was 99.99% probability that this result was produced by a truthful person, but but it is. If I'm not qualified to administer that test. The person who did is is overly qualified, and we just it, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. With all that being said, uh, we'll make sure to get you back out to your vehicle. Thank you, sir. Okay? Yeah. Hold on. Did you have a pain? Did you have anything you came in? Just my wallet and my keys. And what pen is that process? And your what? You in your sunglasses? Yep. Okay. So, that, that, right that was the uh, administrators, the test administrators. I'm going to walk out here.